presentation of the Insight.com Bowl is brought to you by Germ Killing Listerine. Don't let a good mouth go bad. And by Burger King. Try the new Burger King fries that taste that beat McDonald's fries. Fifty-nine-year-old Dick Tomey taking his sixth Arizona team to a bowl game after completing his 11th season at Arizona. He has a career record here of 71, 51, and 4. Interesting note about Dick Tomey. He is only the third coach in the history of big-time college football to be the winningest coach at two different schools. The other two coaches, Bear Bryant at Alabama and Kentucky, and George Welsh at Navy and Virginia. It is a chilly night here in Tucson, Arizona. It is 53 degrees, but we expect the temperature to drop about 15 degrees as the sun has just set. And here in the desert, when the sun goes down, it's like turning off the switch and it gets cold in a real hurry. The wind does not appear to be too much of a factor down on the field, although there are some swirls high above Arizona Stadium. And what an interesting story. Brady Batten will be the starting quarterback in his final game at Arizona. And he, as we mentioned at the top of the show, threw all of 25 passes this year. New Mexico won the toss, and as we have seen so many times this year in college football, they deferred, and so Arizona will receive. Dennis Francione, at the age of 46, in his last football game as the head coach of the New Mexico Lobos. Last bowl appearance for the Lobos, something called the Aviation Bowl. In December of 1961, they played it in Dayton, Ohio in just miserable weather in front of 3,600 people. It was the last time they ever played the Aviation Bowl in Dayton, Ohio. Well, that's because only 3,600 people showed up. And I suppose an outdoor bowl game in Ohio in late in December is probably not one of the great brainchilds of all time. So New Mexico will kick it off. And standing deep is Dennis Northcutt. Northcutt is also the favorite wide receiver for the Arizona offense, and we are ready to go. New Mexico and Arizona. Products of the Gadsden Purchase. And this is going to be a touchback. Arizona will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. And now a look at the Napa starting lineups. The quarterback, of course, is Brady Batten, but they're going to need a big running game tonight from Trung Candidate. He has coming in with a gimpy ankle and foot, but he has averaged 100 and a half yards per game when healthy. Dennis Northcutt, as we mentioned, is the favorite wide receiver, and there is a huge offensive line for Arizona. Jose Portilla making his 23rd consecutive start, weighs 326 pounds, the average weight of the offense for Arizona. The offensive line is about 310 yards and 310 pounds. And before the very first play of the game, there's a flag. The referee is John Smith, and it's a Big East officiating crew. Not a good start before your first play. You have any legal substitution? No, that's something we've seen that has been called frequently throughout the collegiate season. 12, 13 people in the huddle. When they break, people go to the sidelines. The officials are much more conscientious about this year. So Dick Tomey's team gets off to a shaky start. First down and 15 yards to go, and Batten is in the shotgun. Generally, he's considered to be a quarterback up over center. Instead, he's throwing near side. It's incomplete intended for Dennis Northcutt. Defensively now for the New Mexico Lobos. The Napa starting lineups. Ryan Taylor has 23 tackles on the season. 11 of them are for sacks. The leading tackler is the linebacker, Blaine Irwin. 109 of them. One sack and seven tackles for a loss. And five secondaries for New Mexico, all of them seniors, all of them from Texas. And Ramos McDonald, they think, will be either a first or second round draft pick. He is an excellent man-for-man -man cover player. We are off.
off to a shaky start as they're resetting the game clock. Second down and 15 yards to go. I think they're just trying to drop the drama, don't you? Well, they're not doing a very good job. Now they've reset the 25 second clock. And here we go. It took a while, but here comes the second play from scrimmage. And now here's Batten in his much more familiar position up over center. Schmidtke is a single setback, and Schmidtke gets across the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Kevin Schmidtke, who carried the ball only 30 times all year, but he picks up about eight on the play. Charlie Schmidtke's best game was probably his freshman year. I remember it was a nationally televised game against Georgia Tech, and he came in as a true freshman. Had, I think, 92 yards on 11 carries, just kept banging up the middle, and since that time, he has been beaten out, but he is certainly here once again. Dick Tomey conscious of the fact that there are seniors playing their last game. He wants to give Schmidtke an opportunity. He did well there. And he grew up in Tucson. So on third down, a long six. Batten from the shotgun. Throwing near side, and it is complete to Brad Brennan, but he appears to be short of a first down by about a yard. A little bit of confusion there on the part of Brennan and Williams. They were both in the same vicinity looking like really that they were looking appear to be running close to the same routes there's an out route and there's an out route Williams right in the way very fortunate for Arizona to come up with that ball and so on fourth down Ryan Springston is on to punt it away and Chad Smith will catch it at the 30 and pay dearly for it and flags are he didn't get the two yards he needed. Instead, he got flattened for his efforts. Interesting, though, because the timing of the Arizona tacklers was impeccable, but you're right, with the, with the rule and the two yards, certainly they didn't allow that, so they'll get some penalty yardage. Take a look at you see right on top, both number 21 and 29 for Arizona. That's Kelly Malvo. And Lachelle Rich who were right there and just clobber the returner, but they did not allow the two yards, hence the penalty. Chad Smith's reputation was that he didn't particularly like to make fair catches. We saw it firsthand, and he paid for it. Kelly Malvo has started every game for the Arizona Wildcats over the past three seasons. At the uh, right quarterback slot. The senior from Long Beach, California, leads the team in 10 passes defense. Broken up. Heads in the game. Heads in the game. That's how we go. And so here's the first play from scrimmage, and let's see what Graham Lee is able to do on that sprained right ankle. Rolling, throwing, and it's nearly picked off by Rashid Johnson. And now let's take a look at the starting lineups for New Mexico. Graham Lee, who has been responsible for 32 of New Mexico's 44 offensive touchdowns. His favorite wide receiver is Pascal Velcro Voles. And an offensive line that's not particularly big, anchored by 310-pound center Matt Tyner, by far the largest of the offensive linemen. And so here is Graham Lee from the shotgun, trips to the left, looking right, throwing right, and he completes it to Pascal Voles. Picks up just a few yards on the play to about the 40, picked up about five. Voles is really a great story because last year in 1996, he caught a mere six passes for 73 yards. And I asked the coach, I said, how can you go from six passes and 73 yards to this season where you have 69 catches, 1,229 yards, and 13 touchdowns? And he said that the young man put in the requisite work during the summer, lifting the weights, running the routes, and improving his speed. Four wides on third and five. And Hempel, the tight end in motion, three to the left, throwing right down the sideline, incomplete, flag on the play. The intended receiver, Voles, probably holding against Arizona. 
Well, this is a matchup that's going to be a good one. McAllister, who is a two-time All-Pac-10 corner for Arizona, matched up against Vols. This time, Vols comes out the winner. McAllister being a little bit too physical when the ball is in the air. <clears throat> Note when they go to the four wide receiver set off times when you have your big time receiver you're going to put isolate him on the one side and the three wide receivers to the left. That's what New Mexico did that time. They're able to take advantage. Defensive pass interference defense spot foul first down for New Mexico at the spot. Look just to the left of your screen. You can see the push there. You see the official sees it, pushes it out, and Vols, Vols asking for it, and he gets it. McAllister, the son of one of the great long jumpers and halfbacks at UCLA, James McAllister. First and 10, New Mexico invading Arizona territory for the first time at the 45. Out of the I formation, here is Lee, and Lee gets just a couple of yards. Charlie, you can see a little bit of a limp, but I don't, it, it appears that it's not too painful because don't forget on the first series in that very first play, their, their, their first play they called is a roll left to test it. And so certainly he may not be as mobile as he would like, but it doesn't appear to, to me that he's experiencing much pain. It's interesting in spending some time with him yesterday and walking with him through the hotel, he walked very gingerly well, on that ankle. Well, that's because you stepped on his foot. That was, that was on second and nine, Lee's pass is incomplete. And now let's take a look at the Arizona defense that Graham Lee is facing. Joe Salavea leads Arizona with 11 and a half sacks. He had three and a half of them against Arizona State. And Chester Burnett is their leading tackler with 93 of them, including four sacks. And a terrific secondary. And McAllister is going to be man for man most of the night with Pascal Hall. On third down and nine, as you take a look at Joe Salavea, 56, we expect to be calling his name quite a bit tonight. And there is motion on the offensive line. Like the right tackle. Full start, offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. Certainly one of the difficulties of the shotgun is when the quarterback is back barking out signals, you can't hear him as clearly as when he's at the line of scrimmage. And so that's when you'll see the offensive tackles rocking back and creating those motion penalties. So now third down and about 14 yards to go. Graham Lee is in the shotgun. Looks like he's going to be thrown to the right side. And now he's going to run out of trouble. He's got some room down the sideline, but he steps out of bounds, however, about five yards short of the first down. But what may be most heartening to the folks from New Mexico was his ability to run. Certainly that, but then again, let's take a look at Joe Salavea, double teamed on the pass rush, and you're right, Charlie, it appeared there for a while that he had some room to run. But watch 56 to the left of your screen, all packed 10 defensive tackle, run him down and force him out of bounds before the first down was. That, that is a big time play from a defensive back who ran clear across the field, six foot four, 280 pounds worth. The Samoa. Joe Salavea, Jason Bloom to put it away with Rodney Williams standing back at his own 10 yard line. Uh, we have had far too many whistles and far too many flags just three and a half minutes into this game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So a sluggish start for both teams. Well, then again, maybe he wanted the five yards. It's an average thing. Wanted to work with the stats. Interestingly, punters have different theories where that's concerned. And maybe in the case of Bloom, he does need the extra yardage to give himself a chance to angle things out of bounds and get the pooch by. And of course, each team has had about three weeks off. Well, he, he pushed it, but not intentionally. He's going to run out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. When all is said and done, not a bad one at all. 30-yard punt, no return. It's Arizona's turn when we come back. The Inside 
Bowl.com Bowl is presented by Insight, America's discount source for computers, hardware, and software. And in part by Ford Motor Company, where quality is job one. Scoreless as Arizona begins its second possession, first and ten at their own 16-yard line, and the game plan coming in was thought to be a matter of attrition. The large offensive line, nearly 70 pounds, average bigger than New Mexico's defensive line, to slowly but surely wear them down. And here is Schmidtke from the tailback slot, gaining just a couple of yards. One of the things that New Mexico hopes is going to negate that size average is the number of people that they play, up to 11 defensive linemen, and they are going to swarm to the ball, as you saw there. Good defensive speed for New Mexico in holding Schmidtke to a short game. Schmidtke has never fumbled in 126 carries in his college football career. There he is. Was not expected to see all that much action, but the senior from Tucson is in fact starting tonight. And here he goes again, cutting back against the grain. And had he gotten just one more block, he had some room to roam. But Brian Erlacher, the linebacker, made the tackle. I was waiting for Brady Madden to come back and make that block, because you're right, Charlie, he would have had some room. Good job at the point of attack for New Mexico to push him backwards. Now he cuts back against the grain at the top. The quarterback should come back here now and, and get this guy, but he doesn't. Erlacher, with his pursuits, able to drop him. The way they talk about Erlacher, the sophomore from Covington, New Mexico, they think he may be, when all is said and done, one of the all-time great defensive players at New Mexico. On third down and eight, here's Batten's toss over the middle, and it's intercepted. And run out of bounds. However, there's a flag on the play. And another flag, too, as linemen get into it to a fight. Batten's accuracy is certainly has a lot to be desired. Threw that one right to the defensive back, and we'll try and sort this out. Mark Ransom with the interception. Let's see if it stands. The flag is at the 20 yard line. Two flags and both of them against New Mexico. My guess is that they're going to want to take the personal foul because that's a 15 yarder. The defensive holding was a long way away from the pass, but unfortunate, unfortunately for New Mexico. Batten had some pressure up the middle from Ryan Taylor, number 55, who was right in his face. Defensive holding, 40 change of possession, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, the personal foul occurred after the interception, so that's not the one that they would want. They want the, if that makes any sense, the pre-possession foul, which gives them the opportunity. Watch number 18, Jameel Woods, grabs him by the helmet and just throws him down. Now, that just doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to do that when you see the quarterback roll to his right? Not a good decision on the part of Woods. And so Arizona gets a first down. At the end of the play, we have a dead ball, personal foul, New Mexico. So that's a 25-yarder. Yeah, I was, about to, I was about to say, they didn't tack that on just yet. Now, I find, that, I find that surprising simply, Charlie, because of the fact that the personal foul occurred after the change of possession. So it is first and 10 for Arizona. And Dick Tomey's team. Get some free yards, courtesy of some sloppy play by New Mexico. Here's Trung Kennedy with his first carry of the night, and he gets nothing. 
Well, it would appear here, Charlie, that early on, New Mexico was not very frightened of Batten's ability to throw the ball. Look at all the people here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the proverbial box that you have. They're going to make Batten beat them. And as you pointed out at the top, Charlie, he's only thrown 25 passes this season, so even though he was the starting quarterback, he has to be a little bit rusty. And you would think with that nearly 70-pound advantage, offensive line to defensive line, they'd be able to get some holes opened up, but they haven't. They pass underneath to the tight end, Mike Lucky, and Mr. Lucky is about a yard and a half shy of the first down. See, when in doubt, this is a good decision. When in doubt, go to your tight end. You know he's sure-handed. He'll come up with a ball and get, get some yardage and give you a little rhythm. There you can see, see Lucky is just going to come out, try and find a seam in the zone, which he does. Batten able to hit him between the eights. Get his second completion of the night. 6'6", 270-pound tight end. Third and a long one. Candidate, the single setback. And looks like he's got enough for the first down. Needed to get just inside the 46. Appears he's at the 45. Taylor in on the tackle. You mentioned half of his tackles are for sacks. Candidate is somebody who had gone the distance a number of times. He had four runs this year, touchdowns of over 60 yards, and he had a 76 yarder call back. Arizona got off to a one and three start and they were losing 21 nothing at San Diego State came from behind and beat San Diego State 31 28 and in that game candidate had a 96 yard touchdown run and that turned the fortunes of the Wildcats around this season from the shotgun on first down and here's candidate again and he turned the corner nope. But Candidate played only about five games this year. He had all sorts of foot and ankle problems. Still, However, have. when he is healthy, he can average 100.5 yards per game. And nearly six yards a carry. Only a sophomore. This is a very young team. I, I think that if you were to really press Dick Tomey and say, did you think you'd be in a bowl game at the end of this year? I think, to be very honest, he'd have had to say no. But the development of Jenkins and Candidate and others has really helped the Wildcats. Second and nine. We didn't expect to see Batten from the shotgun this much this early. Throwing, sideline, incomplete. Intended for Keith Smith, the backup quarterback. Now, just as I was talking about the fact that Batten did not have his timing, he throws a beauty of a route here on the corner. Gets the five-step drop, throws off the back foot. Look at this. This is right on the money. This is a great throw. That's, that, that's a ball that should have been caught. And Jameel Woods with the last second defensive play. So Keith Smith, who we expect to see at quarterback at some point tonight, who completed nearly 67% of his passes this season. Nothing for one as a receiver tonight. 39. Play deeper distance, incomplete, intended for Brad Brennan inside the 10. Again, Jameel Woods, man for man. Woods does a nice job in coverage. Brennan, if he had to do it over again, might have thought about trying to run through here. Take a look at Woods right at the last minute. Right at the last minute, he's going to look back, and when he looks back, if he doesn't look back there, Charlie, it's interference. Yep. But Woods is heads up enough to look back, and as a result, the official has to keep the flag in his pocket. On fourth down, Chad Smith standing deep. He was the one who was flattened because he refused to fair catch it. Won't do it this time either. Flag on the play. Down at the 15-yard line could be a face mask. Or, Charlie, it could be the same call. Yeah, it is. Chad Smith doesn't mind taking his lumps if he's going to get some yardage in return. Two violation of the two-yard halo, five-yard penalty, penalized against the kicking team, first down. See, this creates for special teamers an oxymoron known as muted aggression. You're coming down there and you want to get down and whack the guy, but you can't get too close. And as a result, Arizona has cost itself 10 yards in penalties. And now we... And when we talk to the New Mexico 
coaching staff this week. They wanted to have ideally two passes out of every three plays. Two passes and then a run. And so far, a little bit ahead of schedule. Yeah, they've screwed that up. That's 80%. They've got no chance. <laughs> First down from the 18. Here's Graham Lee. And on the option, not only did he take a pop, so did running back Dion Marion. And when all is said and done for all that effort, maybe a yard or two. Well, to a man, the New Mexico coaching staff admits that they have not gone against the defense with this level of speed. Arizona just keeps stringing it out, stringing it out, stringing it out, and there's the pitch. But negligible gain, maybe a half a foot. Rashid Johnson with the pop, sending Marion scurrying out of bounds. No gain, second and ten. Marion again, the single setback. Here's Lee's throw long down the sideline. Oh! It's incomplete. It appeared to be caught at the last instant. Pasco Vols could not hold on. Tough catch. You see him patting his chest saying, my bad. But this would have been a tremendous catch if he could have held on. McAllis is with him, but he looks back, has the advantage, but he just can't hold on to the ball. Gets to the inside, has McAllister beat a little bit right here. This is very catchable, and I'm sure the Vols would confess to the fact that he needed to come up with that one. His nickname is Velcro. Not that time. Mm -mm. Native New Yorker, born and raised in Harlem, and moved to Tempe when he was 14 years old. A little culture shock there. Yeah, it sure was. Lee's pass tipped. It's dearly picked by Chris McAllister, who is man for man with Pascal Voles. You know, it looked to me like Voles wasn't paying much attention there. Maybe he didn't get around quick enough. McAllister right with him, hip to hip, pushes off. McAllister doesn't bother him at all. You can see right there he stumbles a little bit. And the physical interplay that is between receiver and defensive back, McAllister certainly won that one. Graham Lee just one out of five tonight. And Jason Bloom will punt it away with Dennis Northcutt standing deep back at his own 38 yard line. Bloom with an average this season of 43.7 yards per punt and another whistle. Well, now see when when they had the ball on the other team's 40-yard line, I could understand it. But now on your own 18 to do it two times in a row, you know, you mentioned sloppily played, and that's somewhat of an understatement here. And so it is fourth down and 15. Already, not even halfway through the first quarter, nine penalties, 69 yards for these two teams. Oh, that's pretty one. It's a bit low, but it's going to take a good bounce. No, it won't either. It's going to bounce out of bounds at the 50, where Arizona will take over. Still scoreless from Tucson. Slow start for these two teams. Nine penalties already here in the first quarter. Let's see what Arizona can do with ideal field position. First and ten at the 50. And Batten out of the shotgun. Here's an end around. And it's going to be to the 42-yard line. Dennis Northcutt, the wide receiver, who this year already had six carries on the reverse. That was his seventh. Once again, not that the quarterback is required to block, but take a look at, at Batten just standing there. And as a result, North cut out runs him. He's looking around, where is he? Well, he's almost able to get outside the contain, but Woods is able to drag him down by the shirt collar. Here comes the reverse. Watch number 10, time it up. I think North cuts just a little bit faster than he is. And as a result, he gets to the outside. But Woods makes a pretty good play, dragging him out at the 42. Jameel Woods is had a very solid first quarter. Man for man, and then that terrific tackle. And here's Trump Kennedy cutting back and cutting ahead to the 35-yard line in the first down. At 5'11", 185, you really don't expect that from Kennedy. His power between the tackles, but he shows some good strength there. Trying to cut to the outside, but there's nothing there. He cuts back against the grain. Appears to have been stood up there, but instead he keeps the legs churning. Knocks down his partner and gets the first. And so this appears to be the most serious drive of the first quarter. Candidate and Ethan are 
of the running backs. And here is Canada. And here's another end around. And here is Northcutt. And he's got some room. Cuts back at the 25. And finally down at the 19-yard line. If at first it doesn't succeed, try again. This time 17 yards. Ryan Turley out front to lead him this time. Last time they ran. It appeared that his interference was not there. This time they are. Great job. Completely unexpected. How many times do you run two reverses back to back practically? But you can see the people out front. Northcutt should have been just a little bit more patient, Charlie, to the outside, staying behind his big people, and he might have gone the distance. Ryan Turley, 76 at 6'7 and 302, blocking poor Jamil Woods at 6'1, 185. And here's Trump to the 15-yard line. Pick up of about five. One of the things in the unique 4-2-5 defense that New Mexico employs is the defensive tackles absolutely have to make tackles. Two of the five are over 100 tackles. And defensive coordinator Gary Patterson makes it a point to say that this is by design. It isn't simply the fact that sometimes you see corners or safeties making tackles. That means they're not doing their job. In this case, they require run support from their secondary. From the eye formation, they hand it to the up back. Ethan, touchdown. Kelvin Ethan with his fifth touchdown of the season. A 15-yard burst. 6 nothing Arizona. Ethan, a backup tailback most of the year. In this particular situation, he was at fullback. New Mexico completely fooled, and great job at the point of attack by the offensive line for Arizona. And Mark McDonald is on for the extra point. He is perfect in 31 tries this year. Chris Alec, the putter, is the holder. It wasn't pretty, but it got through. So it's 7-0, Arizona. One of the things that you've been talking about, Charlie, as we mentioned, is the 70-pound weight advantage. Well, when you really take advantage of it is between the tackles. You can see right here, look at the, look at the white shirts coming up, and look at the blue shirts attack. The, the, the charge is made up by the linebacker, but everybody's anticipating. You can see that it's going to be the tailback's ball. Instead, people are pursuing to the outside, and Ethan is able to go up the middle relatively untouched. A 50-yard drive every play on the ground, including two reverses. And not a bad ball fake on the part of Batten. They really did have the inside linebackers looking to the outside for candidate, and Ethan able to take advantage. Well, there's something to be said for that 70-pound weight advantage for the offensive line of Arizona. Kelvin Ethan from Dallas, Texas. Laporte, what's up, Laporte? On the way, baby. He had a big game against Washington this year. 23 carries for 140 yards and three touchdowns. Three of his four touchdowns this year coming into this game. Came against Washington. And so let us see how New Mexico is able to bounce back. Did you hear? I must have heard about seven hometowns. Everyone's trying to say hello. I must have heard about seven hometowns. You, you get, I hope, I hope the mothers and fathers are listening if they're not here at the ball game. You get the sense that they know they're on national television. Yeah. Today. Jim Furman's kick. Swimmer. Nice catch. Shielded by an up back at the 30 and brought down at the 38 yard line. ESPN continues its bowl week coverage tomorrow at 8 o'clock when the LSU Tigers and the Fighting Irish. Haven't they done this before? Well, they're going to do it again at the Pool and Weed Eater Bowl. 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. It's bowl week. That's in Shreveport, right? That game. Mm -hmm. So twice they've got to go down to the Bayou and beat them. Boy, that'd be, that'd be a feather in their caps if they could pull it off. Roy White was the tight end who made the catch and brings the ball up to the 39-yard line, so good field position for the Lobos. And let's see how Graham Lee does. So far, the ankle looks fairly sturdy. Shelton and Gordon in the backfield. And the handoff was to the up-back, Chris Shelton, number 38. Shelton is an interesting character. He is considered to be the leader of this team, according to Dennis Francione. His teammates call him Thumper. His mom calls him Pee Wee. O.J. Anderson had, as I'm looking at him, and I noticed that Ethan, too, wore number 38. 
A number of years ago, Otis Anderson had a theory on numbers. He said that fullbacks always wore 38, 39, 45, 46. You know, those are those those represented that particular position. Larry Zonka, 39. Yeah. Second and ten. Here's Lee lofted one down the sideline, and it is intercepted by Arizona. Chris McAllister. We told you about the one-on-one -on -one competition between he and Pascal Voles, and McAllister is winning it. What they wanted to do here was a hook and go route. You're going to see the pump fake by Lee, but he doesn't have time to really follow through with it. Look at this. Look at the pump fake quickly, and now he knows he's got to get rid of it before he wants to, and the result is a jump ball. McAllister able to measure it, go for over the top of Bulls. Now, how many times do you see this the other way around? Offense versus defense. McAllister shows a little bit more strength, takes the ball with, he only has to have the one foot in bounds, and take a look at the shot that Lee takes. He knows he's got to get rid of it quick. Pow! Takes a shot from the on-rushing blitz of number 23, David Phipp. And so McAllister with the pick. First of the game, Arizona Wow. Two big-time earrings. Look at that. Aren't those like the Navy earrings? Remember when you were a kid? Guys, look at those. Doesn't that, doesn't that bug his ear flap when he has the helmet on? I remember when I was at the carousel on the horse and wanted to pull one of those babies off on the side. Man. Keith Smith. Those are cool is in the backfield. He's the backup quarterback, and now he's going to be a running back, and he's going to gain about five yards. So Keith Smith, who is going to see some time at quarterback tonight, we assume, has already been a wide receiver on one play, and now he has rushed the ball for five yards. He's trying to do, you know what I think he's trying to do, Charlie? I think by the end of the game, he's trying to do that campy Campaneris thing, you know, where he's going to play every single <laughs> position. <laughs> He might be able to line up on that offensive line and not be too disadvantaged compared to the rather small defensive line of New Mexico. Well, coming in, coming into this game, coming into this game, he had done a number of things. 13 carries for 68 yards. That's five yards a carry. Not bad. Strong candidate down for about a yard or two. Now, Sean Salisbury. Sean? Guys, you saw the last series when New Mexico has the ball. The biggest key for them on offense, they got to not only be able to run the ball, but they got to get more yards on first down. They were in second and nine when Graham Lee threw the interception. It's not the ankle that's bothering them on the interception. It's second and nine. And with this defense, Arizona Wildcats will go crazy and feast on a team that's in second long and third long. Five to six yards on first down is going to be big for the University of New Mexico tonight to have a chance against Arizona. Sean, that's a very coaching point because coming into this game, New Mexico been averaging six point yards one yard on first down and they haven't done much at all on first down tonight a fake reverse this time and candidate is wrestled out of bounds but not before he got a first down at about the 50 and that time New Mexico certainly was waiting for the reverse that's a good call candidate uses his speed to the outside take a look at the New Mexico man waiting candidate hangs onto the ball gets the first down for the Wildcats First and 10 at the 50-yard line. The offense of Arizona is orchestrated by 66-year-old Homer Smith, and he is an interesting story to be sure. And here's a fake. This time, Keith Smith is going to throw, and he's going to be picked off. Charlie, give the defense credit. McDonald, great, great corner. For New Mexico is the guy that makes the play. But give them a lot of credit in terms of the fact that now they've seen, they've run the gamut. They've had reverses, fake reverses, fake reverse passes. Nobody is fooled. Smith needs to run the ball. Instead, he throws it right into the hands of McDonald. That's a bad decision on the part of Keith Smith. He should have just run it for the short yardage and bring the ball back. Instead, he decides to make a big play, throws off the right foot, throws it right into the arms of McDonald, who returns it and sets up shot for New Mexico at the 45. For McDonald, his sixth pick of the season. They think he is going to be drafted either in the first or second round because of his coverage ability, and we saw why. Lee's pass is incomplete, second down and 10. Ramus McDonald. He is one of five seniors in the New Mexico secondary, all of them from Texas. 
Yeah. All four of them are gone. And all of them very similar in their physiques. All about six foot six, one about 195. People that can cover and hit. Bramley option. Pitch out. Lennox Gordon. And he's going to lose a couple of yards, and he's going to take a big time pop from Mike Sloco. Well, it's obvious that Rich Ellison, the defensive coordinator for Arizona, is prepared for the option. This really isn't an option at all. He's stringing it out, and there's just no place to go. Pitches the ball. Look at the run support for Arizona all over the ball carrier. Sloco, eight and a half sacks in just five games this year. He has missed a good portion of the season with a bad back, which he says is all better now. Lee gets rid of it in a hurry to Reginald Johnson. And Jimmy Sprott makes the tackle. You gotta like a guy named Jimmy Sprott whose middle name is Wild. <laughs> well, he was destined to play football. Yeah, he sure it was. Defensive MVP on this Arizona football team. Senior from Lakeside, California. Lost eight on the play. Somehow Jimmy Wild Sprott Flores just doesn't have the same ring. Jimmy Wild Sprott. And so on fourth and a fumble. That's beauty. It's going to be returned by Rodney Williams. And Williams gets five yards and makes something out of nothing. And now Chris Fowler. Chris. Well, Charlie, quarterback health an issue in your game and also in the Orange Bowl as well. Tennessee doctors monitoring closely the knee of Peyton Manning, who still really hasn't practiced since that SEC championship game. Manning, very much questionable for that Orange Bowl showdown with the Cornhuskers. We'll have more on this story at halftime. We'll hear from Manning as well as a live report from Miami. That and more at the break. You know, he had such an incredible year, Peyton Manning did. Thought he was going to win the high school. Did. Then all of a sudden he has the bursa sack in his knee. It started so well and now questionable for New Year's Day. Trump candidate is a single setback and he's got some running room. Picks up about five on the play. You mentioned Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator for Arizona. I'm really impressed with the diversity of Arizona's offense. The different things that they're doing, the reverses, reverse passes, delayed draws. They're really keeping New Mexico off balance. You know, the, the strong suit of their team is the secondary in their pursuit, but, it, but with the reverses and all the different things that they are trying to do, that negates their pursuit. They're going to have to stay at home sometimes, and that gives them the opportunity to be a little bit more offensive-minded. And here's the pitch out. Trump Kennedy's got some room. And Kennedy is finally brought down at the 43-yard line. Scott McGarrahan, the safety, made the tackle, but not before Kennedy came up with 17 yards. See, one of the things we're talking about is that the secondary has to stay at home. They can't just pursue and go wildly. And what has been happening now is that the inside blocking is taking its effect. Yes, they are a little bit bigger, but the five people in the secondary can't fly around as they normally would like to. They are a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah. They're about 70 pounds per man bigger. And off to the up back, Kelvin Ethan. And he gets maybe two on the play. Arizona with 103 yards of rushing tonight. New Mexico has seven. What's your point? <laughs> Pretty much what we expected. And I'll tell you what, Homer Smith at the age of 66 in his 39th year as an offensive coach, has his masters. One of the more fascinating guys around. He has orchestrated a game plan that finally, after a very long first quarter, is taking effect. And Bat still has it. Looking, throwing over the middle, incomplete. It was intended for the big tight end, Brandon Manoelena. Well, one of the things that happens here, let's give New Mexico defense credit. They go with the misdirection here. He comes off. Mano Malayuna comes on the crossing route, but New Mexico is waiting for it. That's good coverage there on the part of number 27 for New Mexico. That's Chad Smith who comes in and breaks up the play. Well, I'll tell you what. Chad Smith is a courageous guy. He, he takes those, those punts, gets smeared, and then he goes one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Mano Malayuna who's about 70 pounds bigger than he is. Batten's pass is incomplete. It was intended for Brad Brennan. 
But as Batten was getting rid of the ball, his back foot slipped out from underneath him. And Batten is just two of eight for 13 yards. Brennan was jumping up and down and hollering. Let's take a look and see if the ball ever actually does hit the ground. That's a catch. He's got a beef. You know, I, I was trying to look and I couldn't tell when I was looking in, in some of the. Uh, see the hands underneath? The hands are underneath. Well, of course, I'm an old receiver. I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt. Not much of a punt at all. Shank badly. Takes a pretty good bounce. It'll fall dead at the 31 yard line. No return after a 24 yard punt, and New Mexico will take over. We've got college basketball. The Rainbow Classic beginning at 1 a.m. Eastern Time Monday morning, 10 p.m. Pacific Time Sunday night. The Rainbow Classic. And then Monday we have more college basketball, the semifinals, and Tuesday the championship game. The Rainbow Classic. Always great fun from Hawaii. First down and 10 at the 31-yard line. Lee with Shelton and Johnson in the backfield. Two-step drop. Oh, wide open is Pascal Vaughn. And he is run out of bounds at the 42-yard line by Kelly Malvo. And Bowles was all but gone had it not been for Malvo. I'm going to go way out on a limb here. You can see McAllister on the blitz. He's anticipating getting some help from the safety, but he gets none. Heads up on the part of Lee to see it. McAllister comes on the corner blitz. The safety's got to come over and make some coverage. Needless to say, there was a miscommunication. Foles averages nearly six catches per game. You saw those 13 touchdowns. That tied a team record, tied in with the current NFLer at the Atlanta Falcons, Terrence Mathis. Good company. First and 10 at the 42. Here's Lee. Stopping. Popping. Throwing over the middle. Complete to the 25 yard line to Milton Thomas, a pickup of 17. A variation on the option play. This is a good call by New Mexico. They've run the option unsuccessfully. Now he steps back, set to pass. That clears the intermediate. You can see all of the linebackers are gone from the middle of the field, and that affords Lee a free pass and a free look into the middle of the field. Pascal Vols on the season as we have come to the end of the first quarter. Vols had 69 catches. Milton had seven during the regular season. From the and this is the only score of the first quarter. Calvin Ethan's for a 15 yard touchdown run. 7 0 Arizona. And we welcome you back to Tucson, Arizona, with a 7 0 lead as we begin the second quarter in our aerial shots, courtesy of the Sanyo Airship, making its live television debut at tonight's game. It's been touring the West Coast for the past five months, visiting trade shows and sporting events, and they're visiting with us tonight. And we welcome the Sanyo folks and thank them for their beautiful photography. And so here is New Mexico knocking on the door after a sluggish first half of the first quarter. This game has finally kicked into gear, and we've got a pretty good one. Charlie Steiner along with Todd Christensen and John Salisbury wishing you a happy holiday from Arizona Stadium. The Insight.com Bowl. Handoff is to Reginald Johnson, and he is lucky to get to the line of scrimmage, if that. One of the difficulties here is that if New Mexico cannot establish a ground game, then there's nothing to be said for play action passes, and that's going to afford the Arizona defensive front seven, who had 47 sacks this season to tee off on Lee. Graham Lee was not only their primary passer, he was their leading rusher this year. And out of the eye on second and 10, Johnson is a deep back now. He splits with Chris Shelton on second and 10. And whistles blow. And probably too much time. I probably should have looked this up, Charlie. There are a lot of option teams. A quarterback is a leading rusher. Dead ball, delay of game, off this, five yard penalty, second down. But how many times do you have a team that has if a quarterback is its leading rusher and he threw for 24 <laughs> touchdowns and over 2,000 yards? I mean, it just doesn't happen very often. It just shows the level of talent that that young man has. Five different running backs for New Mexico rush for 300 yards or more this year. And 
five of them averaged four yards per carry. But they were a banged up lot, and so they had a lot of different guys. It was a running back by committee position. Here's Lee throwing, and incomplete. It was intended for Pascal Vols, who was just a step away. Had what they wanted, Arizona in a zone configuration. Surprising though that you didn't have McAllister with Vols because that had been so effective. This time Arizona goes to the zone. Lee is able to pick out the receiver in the middle, which is Vols. See the back pedal, and you can see the zone. He runs the short corner out, and he just can't quite make the touch there. I'm surprised at this point that Arizona doesn't give McAllister some help and just double-team Vols, because as you mentioned, what a disparity in catches. Vols was 69, now 71. The second receiver has only 20. Third down and 15. And Lee is just 4 of 11 tonight. Slips. He's going to run it. He's got some room. He's cutting to the near side. Brought down inside the 15-yard line, and it looks like he's got a first down. Needed 15, got about 17. And also reinforcing the point that you made earlier, the ankle is just not a problem. You see he steps back, five-step drop, slips a little bit. Now he goes against the grain. The receivers are running, they're in man coverage, and the result of man coverage means that the defensive backs have to have their backs turned to the quarterback. That affords Lee the opportunity to make the first down with the 17-yard pickup. And did you see how he moved the ball from his right arm to his left arm away from the tackler so it would be out of harm's way? So now, here's New Mexico out of the whack, and whistles blow again. New Mexico. New Mexico's going to call a timeout. They're first. There is no flag, there is a timeout. 13 minutes, 32 seconds to go in the first half. Graham Lee comes over to the side to talk to Dennis Francione. And Lee, maybe more than anybody, is upset about Francione's leaving. It was Francione who really has been able to propel Lee to the next level of college football quarterback. Lee, a junior, so he will miss Francione desperately. Let's go downstairs now to Sean Salisbury. Sean? Charlie, thanks. Before this series, offensive coordinator and offensive line coach Dennis Darnell took his New Mexico offensive line aside as they're playing against the 12th ranked nationally against the run defense at University of Arizona, and their front seven is so good. He told his guys, he said, listen, when you got a chance to double team somebody on the run, you got to double team. You got to give each other help. As he told us on the phone in an interview in a, against pass protection, they're going to block gaps instead of block men because they feel they can't physically hold up. Well, they're holding up on this drive, doing a good job. We'll see if they can pound it in. But they have to give each other help. And he said, you guys got to be much more physical to handle Arizona's defensive front, Charlie. All of the offensive, all of the assistant coaches under Dennis Francione are leaving New Mexico, except Dennis Darnell, who has elected to stay here with the Lobo. Jamie Oliver is now in the lineup. Handoff was to Chris Shelton, and Shelton gains just a couple of yards. You saw the average at first down. That that's certainly a byproduct of this particular series because before this series, New Mexico was averaging somewhere between three and four yards. And it's second down and eleven, a loss of about one on the play. But it's an interesting story how New Mexico, all the assistants are leaving with Francione after the game, except the now offensive coordinator, Dennis Darnell. Rocky Long will be the new head coach at New Mexico as soon as UCLA is done with its bowl business. And here is Lee, and he gets nothing. He is popped by Sprott. Jimmy Sprott. We have to question the play calling of Dennis Darnell a little bit. Certainly the option has been ineffective to this point. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Charlie, the best they've done on this is about three yards. Everything else has been one, two, and in this case, a loss of a yard. I just don't think it's going to be effective against the team speed of the Wildcats. Third down and 12. Arizona led the Pac-10 this year with 47 sacks, and they were number one in total defense in the Pac-10. Here's a pass toward the end zone. Touchdown! Milton Thomas again! The senior 
player from Livingston, Texas, who came into the game with a grand total of six receptions. With the touchdown catch, it's seven to six. Colby Kaysen for the extra point try. We are tied at seven. Charlie, just as I was being a little bit critical of Dennis Darnell, I got to give kudos to him for that particular play, and here's why. The formation with the two tight ends forces single coverage, and as a result here, it's a jump ball. Thomas able to out-battle Malvo for the ball and hang on for the touchdown. See the reaction of Lee, and he's got to be very pleased with himself because he had a tremendous drive as he leads New Mexico down the field to now a 7-7. ESPN's presentation of the Insight.com Bowl is brought to you by America West Airlines. America West Airlines is the official airline for the Insight.com Bowl. And by Ford Explorer, because the world is too big to be left unexplored. New Mexico was a 10-point underdog coming in. And they were angry as all get out when they heard about it. And here is Milton Thomas, who had six catches during the regular season, three of them for touchdowns. Two catches tonight, one of them for a TD. Here's Dennis Northcutt on the short kick. And a decent return out to the 30. One of the things that happens here, it may not seem like a big deal, but here's what happens. You have a two tight end set. Well, what exactly does that mean? That means that the safety here has to stay in and he has to take a look at the, he has to take a look at the tight end. The result is then is that you don't know which is strong side. That affords both wide receivers to be man up. And in that case, Thomas able to out jump Malvo for the six. You also had a physical mismatch there because Milton Thomas is 6'1", and Kelly Malvo, the quarterback, is but 5'9". And so now here's Arizona. See what they can do. They gain about three second and seven. Chris Fowler. Chris. Charlie, already one dramatic comeback in a bowl today. This is the McDonald's Heritage Bowl in the Georgia Dome. Southern trailing South Carolina State. When Terrence Blackwell gathers in the kickoff, takes it 98 yards. Got the Jags within two. They later took the lead and won it by six. Back to Tucson. And here it is second down and six yards to go for the Arizona Wildcats who struck first. New Mexico continues to hang tough and here's a fake end around this time and Trump Kennedy is across the 35 to about the 39 very close to the first down. This is this is now I believe it's either the fifth or sixth time they've run the play with this particular recipe, i.e. the reverse or the fake reverse. Candidate, as you mentioned, with the fake, cuts back against the green. Still able to get the first down, despite the fact that he doesn't have much blocking in front of him. What a great play defensively by Ramus McDonald, who stayed home. Did not allow that position to become unsealed. And as a result, Trung Candidate had no place to go except down. Now let's see if he's got enough for the first down. If not, it's be short by not a whole lot. <laughs> Got the first down. Are you surprised here that we haven't seen uh, Ortiz Jenkins at this point? Yeah, I am because Arizona really slow has slowed down considerably on offense. And I mean, it's really quite a remarkable story that Dick Tomey has gone with his senior quarterback who has seen limited action but has had just an incredibly positive attitude on his team. But at some point, hey, we gotta win this thing. The handoff is to Keith Schmidtke, and Schmidtke gains maybe three on the play, and Brian Ehrlicher makes the tackle. Now you mentioned Kevin Schmidtke, who had not anticipated playing much. You know, I noticed that, <clears throat> see, get a chance to see Ehrlicher, the linebacker, who they say has the potential to be the best defensive player they've ever had in New Mexico. Well, that's saying an awful lot, considering I remember playing against a guy by the name of Robin Cole from New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Had a pretty darn good career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second down and seven, and here is Batten from the shotgun, and that's Northcutt in motion. Faking near, pump fake, long down the sideline, and it is complete to the tight end, Mr. Lucky. Mike Lucky. A pickup of 
29 on the play. Well, he's lucky because the man covering him, take a look, you're going to see he's looking into the backfield. McGarrahan just keeps looking at the quarterback instead of looking at the receiver, and the result is lucky, who's probably a 4-9, 5 flat 40 guy at best, is able to run behind McGarrahan for a big play. Lucky with the big play by design. Two catches tonight for 37 yards, and that one was for 29. North could flank out to the left side. Pitch out, fake end around this time. Here's Schmidtke. And Schmidtke to about the 25-yard line, a pickup of four. Blake Irwin was in on the tackle. Irwin, the leading tackler for the New Mexico Lobos this year. Now that's the seventh time that we've seen the misdirection with the reverses and one of the reasons why you have to be asking yourself is it doesn't seem to make any sense. Why do you keep doing it? One of the things that it's doing Charlie is it's hurting the run support for New Mexico. Whoever has the man in coverage has to sprint back and make some adjustments. Hence the reason why Homer Smith continues to go with this misdirection off the reverses. Well nothing doing this time for Mr. Schmidtke. He was met by Bill Borchers, number 98, making his 23rd consecutive start, the junior from Dell City, Oklahoma, a loss of four on the play. Now this is going to force Batten to have to come up with a big play here, third and ten. Up to this point, the third down conversions, Charlie, always seem to be third and two or third and three. Now they do have a legitimate third and long. Brennan and Rodney Williams are flanked to the right side. is up over center and has a world of time firing and it's complete Dennis Northcutt inside the 10 it's first and goal one thing that you commented to me at the top Charlie is that even though this young man had only thrown 25 balls he does have an arm watch how fast this gets here zip it's a deep in route to Northcutt their leading receiver who had caught 58 balls coming into this game Take a look at the in route. He gets behind the linebacker. Doesn't exactly square that off, but he has enough space where he's able to find the opening. And of course, as we mentioned, Batten threw it on a clothesline. And off to the up back, Kelvin Ethan, and he is inside the five, down to about the two yard line. This is where New Mexico has got to put nine in the box and hope for the best on the outside. Because this is where that 70 pound man advantage certainly is going to be something that's beneficial for Arizona. Same play that, that had the touchdown. And if he can get cut back just a little bit more, you saw the crease, just couldn't quite take advantage of it. Ran behind Turley 76 in the center, Rusty James 60. Second down and goal at the three. Candidate and Ethan split behind. Give it to Candidate, and he's a candidate for a touchdown. His fifth of the season, Arizona regains the lead. offensive line or rather that the offensive cognizant said he has in the offensive line for Arizona usually at this point you want to go straight ahead but they can afford the luxury of handing off and letting him go to the outside simply because of the fact that you can see the dominance of the offensive line of Arizona people are coming out and pushing the people off the ball and the result Canada with a touchdown despite the missed extra point Wildcats up by six Check it out, Ma. Like I want to say, I want to say Merry Christmas to you, baby. I love you. That's love Trump you Kennedy. Fun, oh yeah, everybody. Hey. Getting some free air time after the touchdown run. Three yards, nine plays, 71-yard drive, four minutes and 15 seconds. Sorry to interrupt the conversation back home, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Kennedy, but we have some business to attend to. And Happy New Year from all of us. And on New Year's Day, Todd and I will be in Pasadena. And for those of you who are unable to watch the game on ABC, we will be doing the game on ESPN Radio. 
coast to coast and around the world via Armed Forces Radio. Look forward to that. Interesting graphic here, Charlie. New Mexico in their first five drives had a total of seven yards on their last drive, 71 yards. So it'll be interesting to see here if they can maintain that offensive rhythm. And let's see if that extra point gives them a little bit of momentum on this next series. At the 15-yard line, Jamie Oliver across the 30 to the 31. Well, tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 on the West Coast, Boomer's back in the host chair, joined by T.J. Mort, Sterling Sharp, and Joe Theismann. A preview of the Lions and Bucks and Dolphins and Patriots. And then at the end of the day, it's prime time. All the highlights of both games. How about those Vikings, huh? Man. Surprise. Wow. In that miserable weather, Dome teams never win in miserable weather, but they certainly did today. The Vikings with a big comeback at Giants Stadium. I'm and happy for Randall Cunningham. He had a miserable first half, but he hung in there and had a terrific second half. And here's Graham Lee. And Lee's able to turn the corner and get wrestled out of bounds at the 35. Pick up nearly four yards. Mike Sloco made the tackle. And Sloco was out most of the year with a bad back. But when he did play, eight and a half sacks, 13 tackles for losses in just five games. Once again, another of the defensive linemen that can run. As you saw there, 6'4", 240 pounds, and he is a senior, and he is the heart and soul of this defensive unit, and they were so happy when they heard that he could be back for this ballgame. Lee now five carries, 29 yards when he has rushed it. This time, handoff straight up the middle. Reginald Johnson with a burst for a first down, a pickup of nine on the play. Marcus Bell made the tackle, the linebacker. This is really about the, the, the only running play outside of Lee that they've been able to get between the tackles. Starting to spread things out a little bit, the number of options run. Have to give credit to the fact that even though the options have not been successful, it has loosened things up between the tackles a little bit for the Lobos. Shelton and Johnson in the backfield behind Lee, who opts to change his mind and change the call at the line of scrimmage. Here comes Arizona on a blitz. They're covered. And Milton Thomas with another reception out to the 50-yard line. A pickup of seven, second and three. Sean Salisbury, come on in. Guys, just because they're down 4 13 to 7, excuse me, New Mexico, don't think it's for lack of focus. And Todd, I know when you played, you probably go through the same thing with the Raiders. I've never seen a team the day before a game as quiet as the University of New Mexico. Nobody, and it's Dennis Franchione in his six years. That's the way he does it. Nobody talks during practice. Nobody. Just the coaches. They are focused. They are ready. It's not because of nerves. It's because they're focused on the game, guys. Second down, three to go. Shelton and Johnson split behind Lee. Two-step drop. Pass is complete to Pascal Bowles. Steps out of bounds at the 42. Another first down, and you get the sense the Lobos are getting fairly confident about themselves. They have a good-looking rhythm here, certainly on this particular drive. Lee, in particular, three-step drop, gets the ball out to Bowles. Not a big game, but a first down. And with regards to the idea that a team that had people like John Matuzak, Howie Long, and Matt Millen, <laughs> if they could be quiet for any period of time, I, didn't, I wasn't there when it happened. Lee has now hit on six of his last seven pass attempts after the slow start. Out of the eye formation. Marion is the deep back, and he's got the ball, and he's going to lose some yardage. And there is the ever-present Mike Sloco. He is back from the bad back in a big way. Really is. He's been making an awful lot of plays. And once again, the idea of speed, this is a defensive end that can run side to side. You take a look at, take a look, you can see Sloco right there with the great pursuit. If you got your bionic eyes set. Wow, that was a ways away. Cool shot. Thank you to the Sanyo folks who are flying high above. And Mike Sloco with a couple of really nasty discs down at the base of his back and seems to be doing just fine tonight. Here's Lee who is smeared back at the 50-yard line by Mike Sloco. It's 
kind of a ring to the idea of the Mike Sloco show, but that's certainly what it's been. Boy, this has got to be painful, too, when you're a quarterback and you run into the sack. Ouch. Ran right into number 44. That play appeared to be doomed from the start. And so on third down now and about 18 yards to go. Loss of six on the play. Don't forget that the numbers that you saw right there are only the byproduct of five games. Third the country mile. The handoff is to Shelton to the 34-yard line. Correction, Lennox Gordon with the run, 32. Charlie, I think they're going to go for it. Lennox Gordon was a young man who in 1996 rushed for over 1,000 yards, but this year, because of injuries, has not been as effective. But I'm thinking that here they are, fourth and two, or about one and a half. It's about a 52-yard field goal. I'm thinking they got to go for it. Have to. Have to. Fourth down, a long one. Gordon on oh, there. Interesting. From the shotgun. Lee stops, pops, completes it to Pascal Vold. Wrestled down at the 30 yard line on the first down. How many spins did he have there at the end? It looked like he had about three spins. I'm very surprised here, particularly when you've got the great running quarterback. I wasn't surprised at the shotgun, but I thought he was going to run it. Pushes off McAllister. There's the throw. There's the one spin to avoid. There's another spin. There's, wow, three spins. That's a triple axle. <laughs> That's a double Lutz, pal. Okay, my mistake. I never I never said I was Dick Button. There's one. There's two. There's three. That's a triple Lutz. It is. So well, it's first and ten for New Mexico. And here's Lee looking sideline. Incomplete. Vols the intended receiver, but McAllister nearly had his second pick of the night. That was outstanding coverage and an almost amazing catch on the part of McAllister. Man for man coverage. He isolated on the side of McAllister with him stride for stride. He's got him out front there staying with him. There at the last minute, he extends himself and almost comes up with a tremendous catch. McAllister, first team, all Pac-10, second year in a row, and we see why tonight. Lennox Gordon is the single setback behind Lee on second and 10 at the 30. Here's Lee throwing, completing to the 21-yard line to Pasco Bull. That was quite a toss across the field by Graham Lee. You know, this is really fun. You, you talk about matchups, and sometimes they don't come to fruition, but tonight you're seeing two tremendous athletes in McAllister and Vols. You're right, Charlie, able to get it over Johnson. Look at the route. He looks like he's coming to the inside. Shakes a little bit, hesitates, comes back to the ball. For you young receivers, that's what you have to do sometimes. The ball's not always going to be exactly where you want it. Sometimes you've got to come back for it. And because it was across the field, that pass is about 35 yards and a P. And here's Lee inside the 20, and he's got a first down. Marcus Bell made the tackle. First time they had run the option with the full set backfield. Arizona hadn't seen it. This time he has some people out front to block for him. He has no intention of pitching at this point. He's just going to lower his shoulder and see what he can get. And he does get the first down. Charge Arizona. So Arizona wants to collect itself as New Mexico with momentum and the ball. First and 10 at the 19 yard line. And so the question of Graham Lee and the Gimpy Anchor coming into the game has been answered. He has shown no ill effects whatsoever. And he's shown an awful lot of courage, too. None of the sliding or none of the stepping out of bounds. He lowers his shoulder to see what he can get. And of course, when you're six foot three, 214, you're big enough to do just that. Told you at the top of the show, he has been responsible for 32 of New Mexico's 44 offensive touchdowns. 24 touchdown passes, eight of them running. He was only sacked 12 times all year coming into the game, and one pick in the last four games. 13-7 Arizona, but New Mexico's on the move. Each team with two timeouts remaining, with 2.51 to go in the first half, and Graham Lee tonight, 25 yards rushing. 82 more yards of passing, 107 total yards here in the first half. And it is first and 10 at the 19-yard line. 
New Mexico is on the move. Lee began the night one out of seven, but he has hit on eight of his last ten. Out of the I formation, Reginald Johnson is a deep back. And Graham Lee slips and falls at the 26-yard line. Feet came out from under him and lost seven. And that is a huge play for New Mexico because they were, you know, they didn't get the big plays. Certainly they haven't had that in these last two drives. They've been getting up by increments. He just slips and goes down. I wonder if he was a little bit ginger in not putting that right foot down. Yeah, not, he at let this, uh, not at this point. Second down, 17. That's falls in motion. And Lee with the handoff to Reginald Johnson. And Johnson gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down in a long time. It seemed, to say, it seemed strange to say that Arizona made a good play in holding that to a seven-yard game, but when they blitzed their interior people, they didn't have anybody in the secondary. Fortunately, in the middle of the field, rather, so they were able to make the tackle, and as you say, force a third and 11. And Graham Lee is up over center. Throws it toward the corner. Complete. It was intended for Brian Messer, who is a third-string quarterback. I think Brian Messer was confused. Take a look. If he keeps going, he's got a touchdown. Look, he hesitates right here. Now look. Look at that. He had kind of a hook and go. And look at that. He's still almost able to come up with a ball. Messer miscommunicated with the quarterback because if he's able to keep going on that particular route, he'd have a touchdown. Messer had seven catches on the season. He didn't get it that time. And here's the field goal try for Colby Cason from 37 yards. Tough angle. But he has... No, he just missed it. Just missed it. And so Dennis Franchione's offense comes up short with a minute and 27 seconds left in the first half. Missed it by yay much. And so Arizona with two timeouts left in the first half. And a six-point lead, first and ten at their own 20-yard line. And Batten is still in it quarterback hey. still has the ball throws long over the middle incomplete intended for Brad Brennan boy that was a big time fake wasn't it good ball fake hides the ball behind his back has kind of a Statue of Liberty feel to it take a look at this it's interesting a la Rex Kern Hello. Jack Milton. hey cool hey, okay. now he's got it Brennan to the post just can't quite extend himself enough to make the catch I keep thinking he's got to be related to Brian Brennan. Remember the old wideout for the Cleveland Browns? Certainly not Walter. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Second and ten. And the handoff is Trung Candidate. And Candidate is brought down at the 29-yard line. Here's Chris Fowler. Chris. Well, Charlie, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Miami for a live report, the latest on the condition of Peyton Manning's swollen knee. Also to Shreveport for a preview of the Independence Bowl matchup between LSU and Notre Dame. And also highlights of two wild, wild card games in the NFL this afternoon. Lee and Kirk join me at the break. And we'll see you then. Some good stuff this afternoon. Some good stuff tonight after a sloppy first half of the first quarter. These two teams have settled in. We've got a pretty good ball game on our hands. Third down and one. Fake end around. Here's Trump Candidate heading out of bounds at the 30 yard line. A pickup one, it looks like if he's got the first down, he doesn't have it by much. Ramos McDonald knocked him out. It appeared the initial mark was a little bit short. Well, they're going to have a measurement and check and see for themselves. That's Ramos McDonald, who has had an outstanding first half. Well, they already have it on the board. It's fourth and one, so. Well, then, why That's bother? it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in stone. Well, it's certainly in lights. Short by that much. They were right. All right. 
Give the seat. Now, don't you don't go against the board. <laughs> Fourth and inches. Well, I don't think it's a big decision. Arizona's going to punt this away with 38 seconds. That's a great play by the New Mexico defense because up to this point that had been very effective for Arizona with the fake reverses. And remember, New Mexico, one last possession here in the first half. Two time They've got two left. timeouts yeah. left and yep. 38 seconds. That's not all bad. Ryan Springston to punt it away with Chad Smith standing back at his own 25 yard line. The safest bet of the night. He won't fair catch it. <laughs> Smith standing back at his own 28. High snap. They do get it off. And here's Smith. Right to get out of the way. The ball will be dead at the 23-yard line. Nice punt. 48 yards and no return. ESPN and ESPN2 brings you a bowl week doubleheader on Monday beginning at 3.30 Eastern time on the Deuce. The Aggies taking on the Cincinnati Bearcats in the Sports Humanitarian Bowl. And then at 8 o'clock Monday night on ESPN, the 17th ranked Rams battle the 20th ranked Tigers in the Plymouth Holiday Bowl on ESPN and the Deuce on Monday. So now let's see what New Mexico is going to do with 25 seconds left in the first half and a lot of real estate to negotiate. Well, I think that punt not only was it in length, but it took 13 seconds. I, I think uh, here's the lead's going to run. Going to stay in bounds and knock down. Took a pretty good looking at the 29 yard line by Daniel Greer. Quiet. And we have an injured player down there. And that may have been Greer who made the tackle. Mexico. Ooh. Greer in a collision with Chester Burnett. There is no more frightening sight or sound then when you see two players who don't really see one another coming collide head on as Daniel Greer did with his line mate Chester Burnett who's actually a linebacker as they combine to make the tackle. And let's saw, take a look and see how that all happened. See the pursuit and watch the head and necks come together with Greer and Burnett. See how the neck snaps back a little bit. We're hoping that it's just a sprain. We, ju we just got the OK signal from Sprott standing next to him would seem to indicate that things are all right. But, but that is that's quite a concussion. Greer is 264 pounds and Burnett 35 is about 225. A junior. Well, Charlie with 25 seconds left in the half and on your own 23 yard line I I didn't understand the call and of course that has no relevance now well, we see his uh, hands moving and, and he just moved his legs yeah, up and down that's boy whew, that's the first thing you want to see and there's some movement and coming off the Reggie Brown incident in Detroit about 10 days ago um, well look Here at we this. go that's All right. Great. good Oh, everybody was holding their breath, and there's Pascal Foles. Well, I think, you know you know what happens, Charlie? A lot of that, initially, there's just such a shock to your system. You have that collision to your head and your neck, and maybe the wind's knocked out of you a little bit. It's just... It's, and you're scared to death. That's right. Exactly. At right. the you're end frightened. of the day, you're scared you're to death. absolutely right. And so... You, you know, don't know if you've got feeling in your and fingers you know, and yeah, toes. There's no way you want to just bounce up. So it requires the patience of those watching, and... And, and as you mentioned, I think that as a result of the uh, Brown injury in Detroit, people are willing to be patient. Absolutely. We've got nowhere to go. And either to the 50,000 or so here at Arizona Stadium, watching a pretty entertaining first half with less than 10 seconds to go now. Graham Lee's pass is overthrown, and we are down to eight seconds. Graham Lee rolling to his left is not going to have as much mustard on a possible Hail Mary. 
And coming into the game, the, the, the weakness or the question about Graham Lee was whether or not he could roll to his left and how much zip he could get on the ball. So they're going to try and do something or just run it. That's what they're going to do. They're going to run it, and that's Lennox Gordon. He's got some room. This is the last play of the half, and Lennox Gordon pads his steps as we come to the end of the first half. And it's been a good first half. Arizona heavily favored coming in, but the Lobos are playing them tough. It's 13-7. Now well, let's go back to the studio and Chris Fowler. Chris? Second half coming up in just a moment, but first let's go downstairs to Sean Salisbury, who conducted this interview just before game time today. Sean? We're with Eric Crown, who's the CEO and chairman of the board of Inside Enterprises, who is sponsoring this event. And would you have thought about this 11 years ago, this kind of vision, that you'd be here sponsoring a game like this? Oh, absolutely not. We just started one customer at a time, and all of a sudden it became a great bowl game. Now, why college football and why this game in particular? We believe our customers love sports, and we want to be a part of it. We want to bring them the, the excitement that they're looking for. Now, 1998 is fast approaching. Do you stay involved with this, and where's your company going as we head to the new year? Uh, the company's going to a billion and beyond in sales, continuing to serve our customers, and we're going to continue to have strong involvement in college sports. And it's nice to be involved in sponsorship and have a home team playing at their home site. Oh, absolutely. We're, we're looking for a sellout, and we hope this will help. Eric Crown, the CEO and chairman, we appreciate it on behalf of ESPN and everybody involved with the Inside.com Bowl. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right, Sean, so it's 13-7 at the half. Arizona came in a 10-point favorite. And Brady Batten has done a reasonably decent job at quarterback. And so I guess the crying question is, when are we going to see Ortiz Jenkins? I was, wondering, I was wondering that myself in terms of the fact that if I'm Ortiz Jenkins, I'm saying, well, no, wait a minute. I appreciate the senior guy, but I'm the one that got us here, you know, particularly over the last couple of weeks of the season. I'm thinking that somewhere in the third quarter, he's got to come in. It's only 13 to 7. And frankly, the Arizona offense seemed fairly flat outside of a couple of reverses which uh, merely disguised I think some some glaring basic inefficiencies as we begin the second half that is Jamie Oliver to the 30 yard line let's go downstairs to Sean Sullivan guys thanks I talked to coach Dennis Francione in New Mexico and he said he's really pleased with this team's effort they got to come away with points in the red zone and the Graham Lee's played well the ankle is not bothering him he just needs more consistency out of the passing game on the other side of the field Dick Tomey of Arizona said his team's played well on defense keeping them in long yardage situations but on third and long his team hasn't been able to close it out and he's concerned about Graham Lee's scrambling ability and lastly guys we'll see Ortiz Jenkins if they want to change up and if they go to the no huddle Keith Smith will play but you're going to see Batten right now that's when Arizona gets its first series but now it's New Mexico and on first down Reginald Johnson gets across the 30 to the 31 yard line statistically speaking at the half Arizona with one more first down and considerably more rushing yardage a little more passing yardage for Graham Lee in total yardage Arizona by 34 and they lead by six 13 7 this is the second play of the second half second down at seven Shelton and Johnson behind quarterback Graham Lee and here he is rolling rolling throwing across his body wisely out of bounds the nearest receiver was Pascal Foles and he was two counties away rolling to his left once again Arizona keeps contained Take a look at the bottom of your screen. You're going to see that the blue shirts do not get out flanked, even though he's rolling to the left. First, you can see Sloco just gets cut down, but that forces him to move back even farther than he wanted to. And he takes a big time lick from Marcus Bell. New Mexico's offensive line is steady, but not spectacular. What they do have is continuity. All five of their starters started all 12 of their games this year. Marion is now the deep back. And Voles is in motion on third down at about seven. And Marion is going to lose a couple of yards. Marcus Bell was there to greet him. This is really the way New Mexico started the first half. Their first five drives culminated in only seven yards. The next two culminated in over 150. And so here, 
They were hoping to get off to a good start, but Bell with two very good plays back to back for the Wildcats. Jason Bloom's 43.7 yard punting average on the field with Dennis Northcutt standing back at his own 28. End over end. It takes a wicked bounce. Northcutt gets it way back at the 19. And he is brought down at the 32 yard line. So Dennis Northcutt made something out of nothing. And Arizona gets the first try at offense. ESPN's presentation of the Inside.com Bowl is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. At Napa, we keep America running. And by Buick LeSabre for safety and peace of mind. And we have had some spectacular pictures from overhead from the Sanyo airship. And his chief pilot, Steve Tomlin, and his 15-member crew of the Sanyo are proud to bring you these live aerial shots from 1,000 feet above. Arizona Stadium. And we thank them. It's their first professional sporting event, and we're happy to have them with us. First and ten at the 31 yard line. Trung Candidate is the single setback. And he gets the ball. He finds a hole. It's quickly sealed up, however, but not before he picks up about three or four yards. Comes the pulling guard, <laughs> creating some opening, an opening for candidate who rushed for 65 yards in the first half. A lot of them on the fake reverse. Second down and about six yards to go. The line of scrimmage is the 35-yard line. Here's candidate again, and this time he gets nothing at all. Marcus Stanton, the strong safety, came in and he gave him a licking. He was able to fight off the lead block of Ethan. Take a look at number 38. Try just to the right of your screen. Look at that. Just fights it off. Poor job on the part of Ethan, but cutting through, as you pointed out, is stand to make the stick. Bill Borchers was also in on the play 98. Left defensive left tackle. the shotgun. That's got a lot of time firing over the middle and it is complete to Brad Brennan and it will be close to a first down and it looks like he's got the first down because they'll mark his forward progress pretty near the 45 yard line. Brady Batten able to get some outstanding protection. This is about his third choice. He looks right looks to his left can't find anybody at the last minute he comes to the middle of the field where Brennan has set down in the seam of the zone to come up with a first. See his own coverage as the defensive backs look into the backfield. Brennan just sets down right there at the 45 and makes the catch. That's what a possession receiver does. Marcus Stanton also in on the tackle again. That is North cut in motion for Arizona. Patton from the shotgun. Little screen developing and it is sealed shut and a loss. North could probably will end up losing three on the play and again Bill Borchers is there. Good recognition on the part of New Mexico's defense trying to go for the jailbreak screen but New Mexico is able to pick it up. See Batten's stats right there not terribly impressive but functional. And his team is nursing a six point lead early in the third quarter. Certainly helped by the fact that his team has rushed for over 130 yards. Second and 13. And here's Kennedy brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Knifing, knifing through there is Blake Irwin, their leading tackler. Yeah. Speed draw. Irwin able to come from the inside linebacker position and make the shoestring stop of Kennedy, setting up a third and very long. Blake Irwin's uncle is the golfer Hale. And he is the leading tackler on this football team on third down and 15. Batten's pass is nearly picked off by Ramus McDonald. And so it will be fourth down and there is an injured Lobo back at the 28 yard line. And I think it's Scott McGarahan, number six. Brennan turns into the defender here. 
McDonald with a man from him. The ball thrown underneath, and Brennan able to get an arm in to bat it away. Otherwise, McDonald would have had his second pick of the night. Brennan became the defender on that play. It's McGarrahan walks off the field under his own steam. Springston to put it. The extreme Chad Smith standing back at his own 20 yard line. Oh, that's beauty. That's beauty. And Smith is going to pay for it again. Sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. And so do Mexico. We'll start from deep in its own territory when we come back. Chad Smith seems to like to get hit a lot. And for whatever reason, I guess the officials got tired of the two-yard cushion call because they'd already called it twice. And in this, <laughs> this situation, Kelvin Hunter clearly giving him the half-yard cushion. But the word on Smith coming into the game was he hates fair catches. They were right. First and 10 at the 12-yard line, Shelton and Marion in the I formation behind Bram Lee. And here is Marion, and he gets nothing. He's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by the wild man, Jimmy Spry. The, num the 40 numbers for Arizona have been outstanding. Sprott, Bell, and Sloco have really caused a problem for New Mexico, particularly in the running game. With exception, Charlie, as I, if I remember the one sucker play, or at the end of the first half when they had the long run, which really didn't mean mm -hmm. much, the running attack in New Mexico has not been able to garner much. Actually, that, that unit of Sprott and Sloco and Bell may be the most impressive unit on their entire football team tonight. And here's Graham Lee across the 15, and he is smeared down at the 16 by Deshaun Pope. And Joe Salavea was in the neighborhood as well. What's impressive to me about Graham Lee is that you mentioned that he was the leading rusher on the team. Inevitably, a quarterback gets a lot of lost yards from sacks. But because he's only been sacked 12 times, and you can see there, strong and fast, that enables him to call his own number on numerous occasions. How many quarterbacks can bench press 315 pounds? Five. Graham Lee is one of them, man. Third down and six. Pass is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Tommy Hemphill. And guarded on the play by Chester Burnett. Looked like Burnett might have been just a hair early. But evidently not enough to cause a problem. Short out, there's Burnett right on top. Shoves him a little bit, but it didn't look like the ball was catchable anyway. And so Rodney Williams is standing back at his own 40-yard line awaiting the punt from Jason Bloom. Bloom with an average of 40. 3.7 yards. It is a low kick. Williams is going to have a chance to run it. And he is run out of bounds at the 44 yard line of New Mexico, but there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. John Smith heads up the Big East officiating crew tonight. Far busier in the first half than he has been in the second quarter on. And it was holding against Arizona. Where the flag was dropped, though, Charlie, is right at the 13-yard line, so that could have been before the kick. Holding is the receiving team. The penalty occurred with scrimmage action. 10 yards assessment. First down. Yeah, wow. that's exactly. That's what I was thinking. Good call, TC. See if we can pick out for you who the, where the holding occurred. Take a look at the middle of the line. You can see coming up right here. Trying to hold, yep. prevent from coming downfield is number 99 for Arizona. That's Joseph Tafoya. And the flag comes down, as you can see right there. It certainly was pre the kick, so New Mexico gets a break. They do. They get a gift. It's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Had there been no penalty, Arizona would have had the ball in great field position at the New Mexico 44. Instead, the Lobos still maintain possession on the option. Johnson run out of bounds at the 30. He picks up about three or four on the play. Buckle up your seatbelts. Coming right down the line. 
Here's the pitch. Look at the collision out of bounds in all the blue shirts. Pow. Man. And once again, Bell in on the play. And Deshaun Polk, 31. Second down, about six to go. The line of scrimmage is a 31-yard line. Halfway through the third quarter. Just about. Lennox Gordon, the single back. Lead back to throw. Long down the sideline. Intercepted by Arizona's Kelvin Hunter. His second pick of the season. And that was great coverage. Stride for stride with the receiver. Play action doesn't fool Arizona much. Comes back and take a look. Stride for stride right with him. Does a great job of getting up. And even though the attempt is made on the part of Greer to strip him of the ball, he is unable to do it. Here you can see on the isolation, Greer not with blazing speed. And certainly it was understood by Hunter with him stride for stride and holds on with two hands. And back at the 38-yard line, Hunter, who made the interception, is injured. We'll be back with a report after this. Truly if, you, truly, if you have the squeamish stomach, you might want to look away here as Kelvin Hunter. Take a look at the left leg. You're going to see right here at the bottom. Greer's body lands on it right there. Mm. You can see the ankle fold underneath him. Here's another angle of it. Oh. And then, you know, quite naturally, his teammates came over to congratulate him, not knowing the severity of the injury. And he wasn't going anywhere. Kelvin Hunter, a sophomore from Los Angeles, who was man for man with Brian Messer and made just a spectacular defensive play, falls and suffers the leg injury, and he is going to need help getting off the field. Joe Salavea, one of the defensive leaders, is out to help his mate. And so as we watch and wait, Kelvin Hunter, we can remind you that ESPN continues its bowl week coverage tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern time with the 15th ranked LSU Tigers meeting Notre Dame again. Second time this season, the Pool and Weed Eater Independence Bowl due to ESPN tomorrow for bowl week excitement. Has, has, has Cecil recovered from his uh, broken leg? Do not know the answer to that. No. I, th I think he was done for the year. Was he? Oh, I think okay. so. All right. We saw him early in oh, the year. Oh, spectacular. Remember that? Big question to Mark with Kel uh, with Falk, Kevin Falk. Out with the hamster. Yeah. Well, boy. Well, we got this freshman, the diesel. Yep. Wait, you're going to love the diesel. Boy, did we ever. But LSU, what a... What a strange season they had. They beat Florida, and then after that, they just went flat. Very strange. Yeah, the next week, they have a home game against Mississippi. <laughs> well, Kelvin Hunter being congratulated, and I think it was the left leg that has now got an inflatable cast on it, and he will be helped off the field. His buddy's no doubt telling him that, hey, you know, you got hurt, but you got hurt on a big play. Sure you made did. a big contribution. I don't know, though, that that's a trade off. Let's go downstairs now to Sean Salisbury. Sean? Now guys, as we await the word on this injury, which looks to be more serious than defensive starting tackle. Daniel Greer, who was hurt just before halftime, and there was concern about that. Guys, it's just a uh, strained muscle in his neck, and he has been cleared to play in the second half, but he has not played in this first series for the University of Arizona, and we'll give you a report as uh, we find out the injury to the leg when we uh, right. find out exactly what it is, guys. Well, it's good news about Daniel Greer. He and uh, Chester Burnett, their helmets collided, and Greer's neck went back in a somewhat awkward position and he was down for a few minutes and thankfully he is okay has been cleared to play and as Sean mentioned uh, he's not seen any action as yet here in the second half there are eight minutes and 24 seconds to go in the third quarter 
at the Insight.com Bowl here in Tucson, Arizona, as they attend to Kelvin Hunter, who has just recorded an interception. And as you see, that left leg is now in an inflatable cast, and you can see the grimacing on his face. He is in a pretty good bit of discomfort. But he gets a great ovation from the home crowd. The strange part about this, Charlie, is it's one of those situations where there's there's nothing or nobody really to blame. No. You know, I mean, it, the, those things happen. You know, sometimes that becomes trite, but two aggressive people going after the ball and the leg gets falls underneath. It reminds me of the old Bum Phillips line about it's not a contact sport, it's a collision sport. Mm -hmm. That collision with turf and bodies and they came out second best. Sadly, he had just finished making a spectacular interception. Great coverage. He was man for man with Messer, and he reached up and took it away. And so play is now back in, first and 10 for Arizona at their own 40-yard line. And Batten is throwing on the run, he's going to throw it out of bounds. The intended receiver was Jay Hinton. And I think they're probably going to take Hunter straight to the hospital. The Sanyo pictures from the Sanyo blimp, and we thank them for the good luck of Arizona Stadium tonight. Second down and 10. Trunk candidate and Kelvin Ethan are behind Benton. He breaks a tackle and finally wrestled down at the 40-yard line. And Bill Borchers again, and he has been playing a very impressive ball game. He's only 253 pounds, and up against center, Rusty James is 296. He's given away pretty near 50. Also means, though, he's a little bit quicker, and you can see that right here. Borchers able to shake the block right there. He's the one that hangs on. Candidate spins out for a little bit, but Borchers drops him for a, for a loss. Scott McGarahan was there to close the deal for New Mexico. Third down and 10. Ethan the single setback. Batten to throw. Batten has time. Throwing off his back foot deep. Overthrowing the intended receiver, Dennis Northcutt. It will be fourth down. This is a situation where Arizona next time out might want to be thinking about making the shift to Ortiz Jenkins. You read my mind. And you begin to get a sense the crowd is beginning to get that feeling too. On fourth down, Springston's punt. Let's see how Chad Smith fares this time. A little better. Knocked out of bounds at the 22, and now Arizona has an injured player. It is Marcus Bell at the 19-yard line. Be sure to tune in to ABC Sports on Thursday at 4.30 Eastern Time for the granddaddy of them all, Heisman Trophy winner Charles Woodson and the number one ranked Michigan Wolverines against Ryan Leaf and Washington State. That's on TV. Todd and I will be on the radio, ESPN Radio. So if you're driving around on New Year's Day from one place to the other, we'll be happy to take the ride with you. Or if you're my parents and you're at home, you better listen. <laughs> and turn the sound down. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they attend now to the left or the right arm of Marcus Bell. And that is Ortiz Jenkins. When this game is over, his attention will turn to basketball. Shooting guard for Lute Olsen's Wildcats. What a year he had and all he can do now is look on. There's movement on the offensive line and flags fly. But he looked really happy about being on the bench, don't you think? <laughs> Man, made no move to take off the warm-up. All-star offense, five yards, still first down. Talked to him yesterday and said, well, how'd you feel? I mean, you threw 19 touchdown passes, had a terrific year. He said, well, I'll play tomorrow night. Okay. <laughs> what? That's what he thought. And you know, it's still only 13 to 7. And you begin to wonder. Well, 
Dick Tomey certainly is going to open himself up for second mm -hmm. guessing. Yes. If they end up losing this game, because you're saying it's only 13 to seven, the question naturally has to be asked. If Jenkins is the quarterback and the continuity and rhythm that he had established with the offense throughout the season, particularly the last four games, what would the score be now? Never know. First and 15, and flags fly again. This is a replay of the first half of the first quarter, where we got off to such a sloppy start. What a kick. Illegal stop. Offense. Eight penalties, 55 yards for New Mexico tonight. You know, it could be it could be back there in the end zone. As you can see to the right, the noise those people are making. I think are really distracting Graham Lee. All 14 of them. See, I think that's a distraction. Second and 20. You're a cool man. Here's Graham Lee. He's got some room. Lee across the 30-yard line. Short of the first down, but he picked up 18 on the play. You talked about the athletic ability of Graham Lee. You mentioned his bench press. We mentioned all the other things about him. He doesn't run like a quarterback. Take a look as he cuts up the middle. Watch him start the high step right there. Look at the high step there like a running back. That's not like carries. a quarterback. 11 carries, 51 yards. It's a big kid, 6'3", 214. He's from Mesa, Arizona. Whoa. How'd they miss him here? Second and about two, and he doesn't like the looks of the Arizona defense, so he's going to call himself a timeout. Charge to Mexico. First and a half. It is second down, about two yards to go for New Mexico. Need to get to the 32. The ball is at their own 30-yard line. The handoff is to the up back, Chris Shelton. And Shelton has enough for the first down. Let's go downstairs now to Sean Salisbury. Sean? Guys, the update and the injury to Kelvin Hunter, the defensive back for Arizona, is a dislocated left ankle. Mm. They have put him in the ambulance and taken him to the hospital. They're going to x-ray it, and they're going to take care of it there. So he obviously will not be back. And one other side note away from the injury, Keith Smith is warming up on the sidelines, the quarterback for Arizona, the backup. The coaches told him to get warm, so you may expect to see him next series. So it's first and 10 for New Mexico. Lobo still in this game, trailing by six. They were 10-point underdogs coming in, and they didn't like that disrespect that they got from those who make such odds. Here's the pass, and oh, it's going to be intercepted. Rashid Johnson with his first pick of the season. And that could be a killer. But that was forced by the coverage of McAllister. Watch the double clutch right here. He wants it thrown out. Now he changes his mind, and he gets a loft on it, and it's able to be picked. Take a look at McAllister's coverage on Voles. Right with him, step for step. Makes the collision. Now he's right with him. He knows he's got a little bit of inside help. Coming over to make the pick. Good coverage on the part of McAllister. Graham Lee came into the game with eight interceptions on the season. He has thrown three tonight. Batten with the pitch out to Candidate. Candidate is into New Mexico territory at about the 49-yard line. Gain of maybe a yard or two. Batten's still a quarterback despite the fact that Smith was warming up. And there's Ortez. Now the question has to be asked if and when he does get in the game, how it's going to affect him having been a starter now for most of the season. Two flankers off to the left, one at the bottom on second down and eight. Wide open, Brad Brennan. First down, still on his feet. Brennan down the sideline, run out of bounds at the 31-yard line. A pickup of 18 yards. New Mexico's coming with an all-out blitz, trying to get right in the face of Bat because of the struggles that he's had here in the third quarter. Take a look. The people are going to be coming here, and Brennan's going to be left all alone. Here they come, and Brennan to the out is all alone, able to make one man miss and get extra yardage for the first down. Good read by Bat. 
Chung Kennedy. Candidate to the 25 yard line. Picks up five. Second down, five yards to go. Ryan Taylor with the tackle. Charlie, this begs an interesting question. That being if Arizona gets in the end zone, will Batten then remain a quarterback? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it then becomes safer for Tommy to make the move and not make it look like it's a move of desperation. He's given him his time and then have a 13-point lead. Second down and five. Chung Kennedy. Down to the 20, just shy of the first down, running behind Ryan Turley. Candidate weighs 188. Turley weighs 302. And those 300 plus bodies are asserting themselves here as they get into the red zone. Candidate, 21 carries tonight, 79 yards. You know what, though, Charlie, right here would be a great time for play action, third and so short. Instead, they give it to the up back, Kelvin Ethan. And it will depend on where they spot the ball. Very close to the first down. I said that simply because of the fact that because they had so short to go, I thought they might go for it on fourth down. And I'm really not sure with that mark as to whether or not he has it. Dick Tomey. 59-year-old head coach from Arizona. His team got off to a one and three start, but a five and two finish. And the big win at Arizona State not only got him a bowl game, got him a whole bowl game and a first down. First and ten just inside the 20-yard line. I'd say there's a bit of an advantage playing at home, wouldn't you? Oh, nothing like home cooking and maintaining some kind of a routine. First and ten at the 20. And here is Kennedy. He's got some room. Kennedy cuts at the five and down at the five-yard line by Remus McDonald and Scott McGarrahan. Trey, here comes Turley again on the pull out front, breaks the tackle and follows his big friends. Gets a good block from Northcutt downfield as well, all the way inside the five. Good blocking at the point of the attack by the Wildcats. Picked up a 14 yards on the play, and now for the first time you get a sense New Mexico is up against the ropes. They can ill afford to fall 13 or 14 back. Candidate breaks a tackle and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and goal. Good pursuit of the part of the front seven for New Mexico. And another Wildcats down. Jose Portilla, the right tackle. A large man, 6'6", 326 pounds. I was going to say, the guys who were helping him up strapped on the weight belts just to pick him up. <laughs> Man, that's a load, 326. Made his 23rd consecutive start tonight. And he is a senior. So this is his last game, and Bruce Wiggins, who is merely 60 pounds lighter. <laughs> and, uh, a mere 266 comes in at right tackle. And candidate in the I formation. Here's Batten. Gets rid of it just in the nick of time. It's incomplete. The intended receiver was the tight end, Mike Lucky. Look at all the white shirts that were around him. Inevitably, when you see near the goal line, they go with the play action to the tight end. There's only one guy pursuing him, or he could be wide open, fooled by the play action. Not New Mexico. Take a look at all the white shirts around Lucky. Great coverage in the part of New Mexico. Three defenders on Mr. Lucky. Third down and goal at the five. This would be a moral victory indeed if New Mexico can hold Arizona to just three. Candidate did not make it. Fourth and goal at about the one. Now what do you do? Got all the big bodies. Pounded in. 
You're at home. You got the crowd on your side. And another Arizona injury, I think. Trunk. It is Trunk Candidate. The left leg, maybe the ankle. Candidate leads with 24 carries and 97 yards. It is fourth down and about one yard. A couple of times now you've noticed that Batten has done the, the handoff to the halfback going the other direction. This might be the time maybe for a naked boot. Run another zone. To probably walk zone in. Keep by the quarterback. Ooh. This is what I want. I want Ty G. Mobby, zero cop. And whoever's on the wing side, whoever's on the wing side, got to go through the inside of the wing. It's interesting because Gary Patterson, defensive coordinator, must have read my mind. That's the first thing he said is don't let him do that. He's trying to cover all the bases. No, he's, he's got the broadcast on his headset. Oh, 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 okay. All right. That explains it. So it is fourth down and goal from just outside the one. Now Kevin Schmidtke has to come in to take the place of Kennedy. Ethan at 210 pounds and Schmidtke at 194 in the backfield. And everybody's bunched up tight on the line of scrimmage. We're waiting on a call from the officials. Touchdown. I never saw the line judge or referee raise his hand. Well, there were eight blue shirts in the end zone, and one of them had the ball, so it kind of, I thought it was a no brainer. Or so it appeared. And now the extra point for Mark McDonald. And now it is 20 to 7 Arizona with two minutes and seven seconds left in the third quarter. I think maybe the issue was that he went in so easily. Watch number 38. Look at him just he spins and right there you can see him laying on his back in the end zone in by about a yard and a half. The umpire looked. The side judge looked and nobody raised their hand. But Ethan with the touchdown, his second of the night, his sixth of the season, and a 13-point lead for Arizona. And New Mexico has an awful lot of work to do. And his relatives and friends back home have to be pleased simply because of the fact that coming into a game, very rarely do you get a fullback who's going to get two touchdowns. So Mother Ethan, you got to be pretty happy. Pleased with your son. Good job, right? Well, O-line right here. Well, he knows how to do right. That's right. He's got a political career. The O-line, yeah. It's the O-line right there. All right. We got you. Ten plays, 51 yards. Second touchdown of the night for Kelvin Ethan. And it is 20 to 7. Tim Furlan is going to kick it off. Jamie Oliver and Reginald Johnson standing back at the 10. Furla does not have the big the big foot. A high short kick. And there's another one. That's Oliver. That's Oliver. Oliver twists to the 40-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for New Mexico. Well, I'm sure that when the Arizona people on the sidelines said, hey, what are we going to do here? We've got the big bodies. Let's see what we can do. Hands to the fullback. You can see the play is made, but he just had too much inertia going forward, and the result is a Wildcat touchdown. And defensive coordinator Gary Patterson. Ah. First and ten. For New Mexico, and they've got their work cut out for them now, trailing by 13. Lee throwing long over the middle, wide open, it's complete down to the 25-yard line to Brian Messer. A pickup of 35 yards on the play. Play took a little time developing. 
Yeah. But it was great misdirection. Look at Messer come down like he's going to block, and all the blue shirts looking in the backfield. He's just wide, wide open. McAllister puts on a burst and is almost able to get there to bat the pass down. Take a look at how long it takes to develop. There it is, Devoles, the fake reverse. Right there, if Lee could have turned around and thrown right away, he might have had a touchdown. First and 10, New Mexico. They are showing a lot of grit in Dennis Francione's final game as their head coach. And now another flag. Or at least whistles. I think the play clock had some problems. Well, let's see what Jim Smith has to say. The game clock should read one minute, 38 seconds. Please make the adjustment. All right, so it's a minute and 38 seconds left in the third quarter. We are awaiting the scoreboard to make the adjustment. Wow. Wow. As opposed to, I was waiting for it to trip down. I went right to it. Technology. It's the Insight.com ball. Uh, good pack. point. Good point. All right. I stand corrected. First and 10 now for the Lobos at the 25 yard line of Arizona from the I formation. The option. Lee's going to take it, and he's run out of bounds at the 19 yard line. Not often do you see the option go to the short side of the field, but this is where Lee is headed. Cuts up field. Watch at the end of the play. This is awfully close. Head first goes FIP. Could have garnered a flag, but did not. Pick up of six on the play, so it's second down and four at the 19. Reginald Johnson and Shelton are in the I formation behind Lee. nowhere that time the option really hasn't been all that successful tonight no it hasn't but I think that we've documented throughout the reason for that is the team speed by Arizona and especially when they go wide field the idea is to outflank the opponent but that just hasn't been happening Anthony Thomas a true freshman made the tackle and there's Dennis Francione as his career at New Mexico winding down at one quarter and 50 seconds then he's a horn frog. Shelton and Johnson in the backfield. That's Foles in motion. Lee still has it. Throws sideline. It's complete. Inside the 10. Down to the five yard line. Chris Shelton. First and goal. A pickup of 18 yards on the play. Questionable at the end of the play. The receiver that comes over and gets a block for him. Watch and see how close this is to being a clip. Now he gets the ball out on the flat. Now watch the pursuit. Take a look here. At the end of the play, you see the block right there. Did he get him in the back or get him in the side? It appeared from my angle that he might have clipped him. But nonetheless, Shelton picks up a big first down for New Mexico inside the five. The leader of this football team, the senior from Palestine, Texas, Chris Shelton. First and goal at the five-yard line. Option, Lee, touchdown New Mexico. They're right back in it. Tony made reference to the idea of grit, and that is a very, that, that's an optimal word here. Down 20 to 7. Certainly they could have faded a little bit and said, well, we're just happy to be here. Instead, they put together a nice drive, good kickoff return out to the 40-yard line. And the option, which had not been effective, as you pointed out, they stay with it. Sure enough, Lee takes it in for six. And Colby Kaysen for the extra point. 20 to 14. It's a six-point game with 26 seconds left in the third quarter. Once again, it's the short side option, which as you pointed out, not much, not much effect, but I guess if you go to the well so many times, and there it is, he fakes the pitch in easily for the touchdown. I must tell you, the way he was limping around yesterday, Graham Lee was a very iffy proposition. We thought 
coming into the game tonight. He has shown no ill effects to that badly sprained ankle that he suffered in the WAC championship game against Colorado State three weeks ago. And Charlie, on the sideline, it appeared that Ortiz Jenkins was warming up, and I think we just might see him this series. And there he is, the freshman phenom who threw 19 touchdown passes this year. And after the one and three start, when he was inserted as the starter because of injuries, they went five and two down the stretch. I, you know what? If you're a teammate of his, you got to like him. You know, so many times quarterbacks are pretty boys, and don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about whether or not Graham's handsome or not. I'm talking about the fact that sometimes they can be prima donnas. It's not the case with this one. Northcutt. Still on his feet. Still oh, on goodness. his feet. Finally brought down at the 45-yard line. as Arizona gets a shot of adrenaline with that kick return by Northcutt. Ortiz Jenkins is coming in to play quarterback. Great foot speed on the part of Northcutt, avoiding tackles, cutting back against the grain. And really, this is a huge play on the part of New Mexico. He's got a chance here to go the distance, but coming from the side to drag him down from behind, I believe was Jared Baxter, the tailback. Meanwhile, Northcutt is still down. Another Arizona injury. Arizona, the much larger of the two teams, as you take a look at the freshman Ortiz Jenkins, who will be the quarterback in the next series. Take a look at the end. At the end of the run, the tackler, he's tripped up, he's tripped up there. And he lands on the ball, and certainly that's got to hurt a little bit. Shea Johnson on the tackle. He's okay. There is nothing quite like getting the wind knocked out. Oh. And so here is Arizona, and there is Ortiz Jenkins, the offensive MVP. You hear the crowd reaction. Began the season as the fifth wideout on the depth chart. He hands it to Kelvin Ethan. And Ethan is wrestled out of bounds in New Mexico territory at the 48-yard line. So a couple of touchdowns in the third quarter. One for Arizona. That gave him a 20-7 lead. Kelvin Ethan. But then, Grant Lee, Graham Lee, responds with one of his own. 2014 after three. The spectacular blimp shots, courtesy of the Sanyo Airship, making its first live television appearance tonight at our ball game, and we thank them. Chief Pilot Steve Tomlin and his 15-member crew of the Sanyo Airship are out to bring you these live aerial shots from 1,000 feet above Arizona Stadium. And so Arizona now with the ball and Ortiz Jenkins finally in the game. Second down and four. And he hands it off to Kelvin Ethan and he's going to lose some yardage. Third quarter statistically speaking, Todd. Well, New Mexico with the three turnovers. That's certainly been an issue, but I think the thing for them, which they have to be pleased with, is the yardage. They had been struggling early on, but now they're able to put some things together and nearly equal Arizona in yardage. And when an underdog lingers this late into a game, that is awfully dangerous business for the favored team, in this case, Arizona. Third down and five. Well, that's the fact that, you know, we can talk all we want about how great Ortiz Jenkins has done, but, you know, any way you look at it, he's got to be cold right here. Mm -hmm. He's only had two plays. So on third down, a long five. Jenkins from the shotgun. He's going to run it. And he's going to throw it on the run. It's incomplete. Fourth down. 
Jackson was the intended receiver, and New Mexico just won't go away. Well, once again, you know, that's the byproduct of, of, of not having the rhythm of the first couple of quarters. He steps forward, can't find anybody, decides to run, then second guesses himself and throws the ball away. Had no chance even getting the ball. The evil Knievel of punt returners, Chad Smith. Dives ahead to about the 18-yard line, where New Mexico will take over. First and 10, but there is a flag on the play back near the line of scrimmage. Ball start against Arizona. I would think that here with only a 32 yard net they might want to think about refusing that one. But the line of scrimmage is inside the 20. So let's see what Francione's going to do. Scott McGarrahan getting instructions from the sideline. Can't continue. Penalty is declined. First down. So the line of scrimmage is all the way back at the 18-yard line. A fairly conservative decision. Well, the 32-yard net, and I, I think that the other thing too is that I don't think the Smith want to be referred to as the evil can evil of punt returners again. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> he has been blasted. Really has. But he keeps coming back. And there he is. Three wides to the right. And they're running left. And Marion is run out of bounds. He picks up just a couple on the play. You know, we mentioned the fact that the quarterback in this particular situation is not the prima donna type. It, it, you know, when, when you're a player, you're a teammate, you're in a huddle with a guy who's willing to stick his nose in there and take the licks like everybody else, the respect just grows, and you're willing to do more for somebody like that than somebody who never gets dirty. And he is leaving or losing his head coach after this game. He'll be back next year, Brad Lee will. And here's the handoff straight ahead. Line of scrimmage. Chris Shelton gets there, and that's about all. Once again, it's Bell in on the tackle. He has had a tremendous game. Not fooled at all by the fake on the sprint draw. He stayed at home and made the play. He bruised his right arm earlier in the ball game and showing no ill effects now. Not going anywhere. Third down and eight. They need to get to the 29-yard line. Lee is still up, and the pass is incomplete. It's fourth down. It's the second or third time tonight Graham Lee has slipped. And it's not like there's been a lot of rain here in the past few days. Well, one of the things that could be is that you'd mentioned the abundance of tape. If they've taped through the cleats, what ends up happening is that the grass and sod catches onto the tape, and that takes a little bit away from the cleat. But as you mentioned, there's really no reason for there to be any footing problems. It's certainly not wet. Jason Bloom will punt it away. Came into the game with a near 44-yard average, 42 for the night. Charge in Arizona. And Arizona is going to call a timeout. It appeared they didn't have enough men on the field. Be fun to watch Northcutt again. Had that terrific kickoff return a little while ago. We'll be back with the punt. 13:28 to go in the ball game. Arizona by six. Insight.com Bowl is presented by Insight, America's discount source for computers, hardware, and software. And in part by Janus No Load Mutual Funds. And so now that Arizona has a full complement of 11 players on the field, and after that timeout, New Mexico's Jason Bloom will punt it away with Dennis Northcutt standing back at his own 40-yard line. Each team with two timeouts left in this six-point Arizona lead. Good snap from center. That's good. Sending Northcutt back to the 35-yard line. 
And down at the 30. Let's go downstairs to Sean Salzburg. Guys, the injury to running back, Arizona running back Trunk Candidate is guessed it. You guessed it. Guess what? An outside severe sprain of his left ankle. Now they say they're icing it down. They're going to check it out to see if he can return. But if screaming when somebody touches your ankle real loud is any indication, Arizona's going to have to rely on another running back to finish this game out, guys. Thank you, Sean. Arizona really has taken a physical beating out there today. Yeah, it, it, it seems like every other series there's a blue shirt on the ground. And one of their blue chip blue shirts. And here's Arizona with the six point lead. First and ten at their own 31 yard line. Kelvin Ethan. Ethan across the 35 down to the 40. Picked up about eight yards on the play. Bart Bernard made the tackle. Besides playing fullback throughout the season, Ethan has been a backup tailback. He's rushed for over 400 yards and had 21 catches. So this is not unfamiliar territory for him. Well, because of candidates gimpy ankle coming into the game, Ethan was getting a lot more running opportunities this season than they might have expected. Eight carries, 38 yards tonight, and a couple of touchdowns. Picked up about nine, so it's second down and just one. Ortiz Jenkins checking off at the line of scrimmage. First down, then some. Boy, Kelvin Ethan nearly busted that one all the way. A lot of times where they don't have somebody in the middle of the field, and it cost them against Colorado State in the WAC championship game. Ethan hurdles a tackler here, almost goes the distance right here. If he's not tripped up, he goes a very, very long way. Once again, the offensive line of Arizona asserting itself. That's a pretty good looking hole for Ethan. Billy Austin. And Kenny Lewis combined to make the tackle. But it is a first down at the 48-yard line. Arizona at their own 48. And now we get to see Jenkins throw. Firing near side. Incomplete. Intended for Brad Brennan, and he took a pretty good looking from Javiel Woods. Once again, similar to, to what they had in the first half, I couldn't understand why you've got two guys so close together in Williams and Brennan. As he throws over there, two blue shirts awfully close together. There's the catch, but he can't hang on to it. Williams with the short route comes to the outside. That's supposed to be an out in a corner, but somebody's either not deep enough or the other one's too shallow, or both. Second down and 10. Ethan the single setback. Ethan to the 46-yard line, a pickup of about six yards on the play. Marcus Stanton made the tackle. It'll be third down and about four. Arizona, even with Jenkins in the game, seems to be very dependent upon their defense. They need to do something here offensively. Here, third and fourth, good opportunity for Jenkins to make a play. That's New Mexico's defensive coordinator, Gary Peterson. And a timeout. Come on, Arizona. Ortiz Jenkins calls a timeout, and we're coming right back. So Arizona's got the ball, six-point lead, 11.22 to go in the fourth quarter. It is third down and four. They need to get inside the New Mexico 42-yard line. And that is Rodney Williams in motion. He hasn't caught a ball all night. And Jenkins slips and falls. He's back down at the 44-yard line. Well, there's no tape on Jenkins' ankle, and he doesn't seem to be having a complaint about whether or not his knee hit the ground. And he wears the low tops, too. Seven-step drop, very slips. The knee's not down there. Boy, it never was it down. It never was down. The official missed it. And so Arizona victimized by a poor call. And so now they will kick it away on fourth down and 15, back at their own 44. A low punt that is going to bounce out of bounds at the 19-yard line. 
35 yard punt and no return NFL countdown with Boomer back in the chair joined by T.J. Mort Sterling Sharp and Joey T Mort from the Lions Bucks game and the Dolphins Patriots game and then when all is said and done it's prime time 730 Eastern 430 on the West Coast tomorrow. Meanwhile New Mexico refuses to go away. They're trailing only by six. 1049 left in the game. Each team with two timeouts. And the Lobos with trips to the left side. Here's Lee. And he's going to run it right up the gut. Graham Lee. 30, 35. And finally run out of bounds at the 40. A pickup of 21 yards. Quarterback draw has been arguably the most effective play for Lee and New Mexico, certainly in the running department. Cuts up the field, the pursuit isn't there. Take a look at the stiff arm at the end of the play. Speaking of strong people, right now is Singleton. Take that. A well disguised play with trips off to the left, and he ran to the right. 15 carries, 79 yards for Graham Lee. Lobos won't quit. Lee back to throw. Throw. And he completes it to the 50-yard line to the tight end, Tony Duran. A pickup of 15 and another first down. Give Dennis Darnell credit. This is one that they haven't gone in a while. Misdirection. Kind of a play fake. Tight end is wide open in the flat. Something you haven't seen in since the first quarter. Graham Lee, the tough guy, once again pays for it. There's the throw. There's the hit. Sloco eases up. Nonetheless, he drops. And an official timeout at the moment. The tight end, Doran, from Amherst, New York, caught only two balls all year. Primarily a blocking tight end. And there he picks up 15. And the Lobos are in business. First and 10 at the Arizona 45-yard line. And plenty of time left in the game. A man whose name we have not called much, but we thought we would have, Joe Salabea. Offensive line for New Mexico has done a great job against a man who had 11 and a half sacks this season. And that's falls in motion. Throwing out of the backfield. It's incomplete. Intended for Chris Shelton. Second down and 10. New Mexico this season in their nine wins, they averaged 35 points and have averaged 400 yards per game for the fifth consecutive year under Dennis Franchione, whose era has but 10 minutes and 17 seconds left. Burnett was there to greet him along with Mike Sloco. Lost one. Yeah, with the inside backer blitz or bullets blitz as it's referred to by defensive coordinators. Charlie, I was thinking as we watched that last run of Lee's. Here come the two inside backers. Burnett right in the way, forcing Lee to hesitate. The play's dead right there. I'm trying to think of a college football team that's any more dependent on a quarterback than this team. Both running and passing. Absolutely right. Responsible for 32 of his team's 44 touchdowns this year. Throwing into the corner and nearly picked off. Bad throw. David Fipp. The free safety nearly got the pick. Once, once again, good coverage on the part of the Arizona secondary, particularly Charlie. I mentioned this. We mentioned the fact that we have not heard much from Joe Salavea, the star defensive line for Arizona. In the second half, a name we have not called is Pascal Voles. Singleton doing a good job on him. And so on fourth down. Rodney Williams is standing back at the 10 yard line. Hunt is out of bounds at 
the 17 yard line where Arizona will take over. 926 left in the game. Nothing quite as sweet as mascots in love. <laughs> First and 10 at the 17 yard line. Elfin gets nothing. He'll probably lose a couple on the play. Brian Erlacher again is in on the tackle. Well, Arizona, strangely enough, with Jenkins in the game, has been painfully predictable running each time on first down. New Mexico is going to force him to make some plays here. Well, they should. When he took over as the starter, Arkansas. Arizona was one and three. And then they went on to win five of their last seven. Second down. And here's Jenkins throwing long toward the sideline. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Marcus Stanton. And the Lobos are back in business. football game tonight. Corner out to the left of your screen. Jenkins just lofts it up for grabs. Brennan does not outfight Stan. In fact, it's the other way around. Stan very physical with him, stride for stride. Here comes the jump ball. Stan battles and makes the catch. Stanton at 6-1 and Brennan at about 5-10. Height advantage and the position. Usually the other way around. Here's Graham Lee on the option. Tosses. It's out of bounds. And not before they pick up about three on the play. Reginald Johnson. Well, there's Marcus Stanton on television. Texas, what's up, baby? Stop Austin. San Antonio. Khalid, what's up? <laughs> All of Texas? Austin and San Antonio? Boy, he's got a lot of friends. It's good to be the king. <laughs> Second down and about seven yards to go. The line of scrimmage is the 46-yard line. Arizona has allowed New Mexico to linger right around the scoreboard all night. Here's a pump fake, and here's Lee throwing sideline. Incomplete intended for the tight end, Tommy Hemphill. And Bell with him stride for stride, and frankly, I'm surprised that... He didn't get a flag because he never turned around and it appeared he did a little face guarding. Watch number 40. See if he ever turns around. He no, doesn't. He didn't. And, that, that, and the hand was right in the face. So instead, it's third down and seven. But Arizona, you got the sense they might have been able to put these guys away in the first half, but New Mexico never would fold their cards. Pitch out. Whistles blow. Play is dead. Flag at the line of scrimmage. Well, I didn't understand that anyway. It appeared that they're going to go with a halfback pass. And who's going to be fooled by that on third and eight? Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. It remains third down. This reminded me of something Tom Flores once said. He said that in third and two and third and three, he had all sorts of people with suggestions. But he said suddenly, third and 13, I was an orphan. <laughs> Everybody's got an idea when it's short. So it is now third down and 12 yards to go. Make it 13. Either way, Lee has got a long way to throw this thing. Throwing on the run incomplete, no flags. Kavika Ortenstein was the intended receiver. Charlie, I'm just not so sure that Rashid Johnson didn't get there just a little bit early. I'm surprised I didn't see a flag. Look at the timing of the ball and the man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was there way early. Should have had a flag on that one. There have been a few calls that have been missed tonight. Here's Ortenstein there. It's, oh, yeah. Yep. Just a little bit early. It is fourth down. Arizona has one timeout left. New Mexico has two. Rodney Williams is standing back at his own 10. Bloom's punt, high and over in. Bounces, and oh, it's going to be down at the two-yard line. Good play. Heads up play. A 44-yard punt, no return. 
And Arizona is deep in its own territory. Walter so Bernard down the ball at the two. But the play here is made. So many times you see guys, the when the guy makes the fake, they, they go for it. In this case, Brian Brazil does not go for it. He goes and almost makes the catch. Bernard gets the down, but it's Brazil is the one who prevents it from going into the end zone. Good play. So the line of scrimmage will actually be just outside Arizona's own three-yard line. Kelvin Ethan and Schmitke are lined up in the eye formation. Ethan the up back. Boy, he gets oh. a burst across the 10-yard line. That's a big-time run right there. He got whacked at the line of scrimmage, could have gone down, got hit again and kept going. New Mexico very much wanted to pin them in there. Instead, they get an eight-yard gain out of that fullback. He has had a terrific game. Yes, he has. 5'11", 210 pounds. And that bowling ball knocked down a bunch of white shirted pins. 12 carries and 58 yards for Ethan. Came into the game averaging just 37 yards per carry. And here's Ethan wrestled down just shy of the first down. Looks like it'll be third and about one. And maybe a little less than one. Samuel Glimp pictures have been spectacular tonight. We thank them. Evidently they had enough. They get the first, the first down. A charitable mark. Well, Ethan has really stepped up for Arizona. When Trump candidate went down with the sprained ankle and he came in with a gimpy ankle, the running responsibilities were handed to Ethan. And now Kevin Schmitke is a single setback as Ethan gets a breather. And here's Schmitke, and he dives across the 15 to the 16. Billy Austin made the tackle along with Bart Bernard. Pick up of maybe three. Deep in their own territory, I can understand a bit of the conservatism, uh, conservatism rather. But Jenkins, you know, his, his confidence here has got to be lagging a little bit. It's a good opportunity for him to throw a short route, conservative route, five, six yard ball. Schmitke again, the single setback. He's wrestled down at the line of scrimmage by Ryan Taylor. Well, see, that's the reason for that, Charlie, because what's happening now is that New Mexico could put eight or nine in the box, and one of them comes untouched. In this case, it was Taylor. So now he comes up third and long, and that forces Jenkins to make a play that up to this point he hasn't been able to make. You know what? No matter what Dick Tomey did tonight, once he made the decision to start back, he was going to be second-guessed. Did he stay too long? Did he do the right thing? I don't think there's any question that he did the right thing to honor a senior who's been so helpful to him and his program. And here's Jenkins throwing out of bounds, saving a big loss. Let me tell you why that he was able to save a big loss. That was a quarterback draw. That wasn't designed to throw at all. He took two steps back and he was going to go. Take a look. Now he's gone. But instead, New Mexico reads it. He's able to scramble out, get rid of the ball downfield instead of taking the big loss. John Wingate, 95, sealed that hole. And so now, New Mexico will take over, presumably with excellent field position. Low, poor punt. Chad Smith sidesteps one would be tackler and he steps out of bounds at the 48 yard line with five and a half minutes to go in the game. Way back when, in the John Hancock Bowl in 1992, Baylor head coach Grant Tapp in his final game also against Arizona. His team came from behind and won. And now, you can't help but wonder if Dennis Francione's team may do exactly the same thing. 
Lee gains maybe a yard. Chester Burnett made the tackle. And there is Dick Tomey who raised that very issue, wondering what kind of an emotional lift or deflation New Mexico might have with the departure of Dennis Francione. Well, you have to figure that with so many seniors, as you pointed out on the team, there is a, a big desire to win one for the outgoing coach for somebody that they've been with four and in some cases five years. Second down and nine. Here's Lee stopping, throwing long over the middle. It's intercepted. Kelly Malvo still on his feet. He's got some room. And finally brought down at the 35-yard line. That just may have been the dagger in the heart to the New Mexico Lobos. And Graham Lee never saw him. Graham Lee off the option fake, faded back, just did not see Malvo playing center field. Thought he had man coverage. Take a look right here. He looks up. He's got to get rid of the ball. He just absolutely does not see number 21 playing center field. He had that one picked from the get-go. Does a nice job cutting back and taking advantage, knowing that offensive linemen, as a general rule, are not great tacklers. And Graham Lee, who came into the game with just eight interceptions all season, has thrown four tonight. Well, that's certainly a credit to the Arizona secondary. And Malvo, who came into the game, with no picks, has won. First and 10, Arizona. And that is Williams in motion. And off to Ethan, and he will lose a couple of yards. Brian Erlacher. With 425 in counting, Charlie, Arizona, Arizona just simply can't sit on it. There's plenty Here's of time. Here's Lee, lost four picks tonight. And that was the first one. McAllister got one. And Hunter got one. And Johnson got one. And Malvo got one. Second down and 12. Ortiz Jenkins. Disappointing night for Graham Lee, but a courageous one. Here's Elfin. Oh, he nearly busted it. Instead, he's down at the 32-yard line. And that is Kelly Malvo. Has started every game for the past three years. Led the team this year with 10 batted away passes. And tonight, finally, his first pick of the season. Got to be exciting, too, as a senior to get one in a nationally televised bowl game. Third down and six. New Mexico must stop Arizona here. And I think they may have. But it will be fourth and about one. Scott McGarahan made the tackle. Well, nope. Coming up right after the game, it's Sports Center. What wild card games we had today in the NFL? The Hawks and Bulls had a big upset in college basketball. Sports Center immediately following our ball game here from Arizona Stadium. The Insight.com. And now. Arizona has fourth down and one with the line of scrimmage, the 27. They have to get inside the 26. Ethan and Schmitke in the I formation. Hand off to Ethan, and he got the first down. They're going to mark it at the 25-yard line, and if indeed that's where it is, they've got the first down, and the clock will continue to run once they get those chains in order. Down. Interesting now, Charlie, to see what New Mexico's going to do with their timeouts. They've got two left. But I mean, are they going to see if they're going to husband them, or what are they going to do? Because because I think that after this play, they got it on first after first and second down, they've got to use them. From the 25, Jenkins is calling an automatic. Tomorrow, he'll be back being a shooting guard with the Arizona basketball team. Here's Schmidtke. 
And Schmitke is inside the 20 yard line. Picked up about seven on the play. McGarrahan made the tackle. Surprising here at this point when New Mexico knows that they, they're going to run the ball, that Schmitke's able to break through and get seven yards. Mexico. New Mexico calls one of its timeouts. They've got one left, and time is running out on the Lobos. And so New Mexico running out of time and running out of chances. Arizona with the ball, second down and three. At the Lobo 18-yard line, Kelvin Ethan again. Very close to the first down. And he has come up awfully big since the ankle injury to Trung Candidate. Ethan 18 carries and 74 yards tonight. A couple of touchdowns to go along with that. He's really been the main. I, I, I mean, he's been the he's been the offense for them in the second mm -hmm. half, really. Arizona with 216 rushing yards tonight. Measurement. Well, they're about a uh, two feet short. And Dick Tomey, only the third coach in history to be the winningest coach at two different schools. Looks like he's a minute and 40 seconds away from adding another victory to his ledger. And New Mexico has used its last timeout. And we've got a buck 40 left. Third and less than one for Arizona. And they've got a six point lead. They've got the football on the 16 yard line of New Mexico. And the Lobos need a Christmas miracle. Christmas is a couple of days past. And on second effort, it would appear as if Kelvin Ethan has got the first down even though he was tossed back. Mr. Ethan seems to think he's got the first down. <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't it? Yep. Well, we're going to have a measurement just to be sure. If he didn't get it, he'll try again anyway. And if not, he'll go for the field goal. Well, Todd and I will be heading out to Los Angeles, Pasadena, first down. And we will have the honor of doing the Rose Bowl on ESPN radio around the country. So if you're driving around on New Year's Day, tune us in. So you think Washington State has a shot at an upset? Probably not. I don't <laughs> really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Michigan has an awfully solid defense, and I'm not sure that they've got enough weapons in spite of the heroics of Leaf and Black. Do you? Come on, you, you've got, I, they've got, hey, do you? Here, yes, uh, just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> I was going to say something that I knew that you'd appreciate. Okay. That is, is that Washington State has a puncher's chance. Uh, okay, there you are. Very nice. I, I okay. I appreciate that. And, that's, and I think that's exactly right. See, I, I don't think that, you know, Michigan, has Michigan gone against a quarterback of that caliber this year? I don't think so. No, they have. And, you know, historically, of course, the Big Ten is not fared terribly well in the big one out there. And even though I know that Washington State's defense is not uh, impregnable by any stretch, uh, Michigan's offensive weapons are certainly limited. Very dependent upon that defense and special teams. Well, I think that will be it. We have come to the end of our ball game, and it has been a terrific season. With our producer, John Ferratzis. John McDonough, our director, Sean Salisbury, Todd Christensen, Charlie Steiner saying goodbye. 
Our final score, Arizona has beaten New Mexico 20 to 14. Coming up next, Sports Center with Gary Miller and Linda Cohn. The Dennis Francione era has come to an end. He's on to TCU. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.